to the team and introduced touchdown potential to the onside kick. Six and ten two years ago, four and twelve last year. But then the Giants discovered the same magic that transformed San Francisco. They drafted Lawrence Taylor, the other rookie defensive standout of this season. And suddenly the city of New York is talking Super Bowl. Today, an NFC divisional playoff between pro football's two born-again franchises, New York and San Francisco. CBS Sports presents... The National Football League. Today, the New York Giants versus the San Francisco 49ers. Candlestick Park in San Francisco, the home of the 49ers. 49er fever, 49er mania has captured not only the stadium, but the city of San Francisco. Happy to be able to say good afternoon to you. I'm Pat Summerall. Blessedly, we haven't had any rain the last two days. The light mist is starting to fall right now. But so far, the field is indeed in good shape as the 49ers and the Giants, two teams trying to go from worst to first. John Madden and I visited long hours yesterday with Ray Perkins and Bill Walsh, the two head coaches, and they gave us, I think, John, a pretty good idea of what this football game is going to turn out to be. They sure did. And first of all, Pat, I think that all the talk about the field is overrated because in the history of the National Football League, a field has neither won nor lost a football game. Now, Bill Wall says that of the first 22 plays today, they will probably pass 17 times. I think it'll be a passing game for the 49ers all day. Now, Ray Perkins of the Giants says, we're going to run on it. He said, I wouldn't be surprised if we would see Rob Carpenter run the ball 40 times today. Now, that's a bunch. So it'll be the classic matchup, the run against the pass. There's the man who's talking about running. You're just looking at Ray Perkins. Joe Danello will kick off, and we'll have an early chance to see if Bill Walsh sticks by what he said, and that is to throw the football, not necessarily long, but for possession, and Danello will get this playoff game underway. Bill Ring and Amos Lawrence back deep. It'll be Ring, fumbled, still on the ground. Both of them jump on it. 49er ball at their own 15. A light rain starting to fall. The 49er offense, the offensive backs and the receivers. Joe Montana coming off a great year. Ricky Patton and Earl Cooper, the runners. Solomon and Dwight Clark, the wide receivers. Charlie Young and Dan Audick. And John Ayers, Quillen, Cross, and Bonhoff up front. We'll check that giant 3-4 defense in just a minute. The starters are Johnny Davis and Ricky Patton. Motion. Montana first up the fires complete. That's the way they said they were going to start, and that's the way they did as Dwight Clark, the NFC's leading receiver, comes down with it. The New York defense. George Martin, Bill Neal, and Gary Jeter, the front three. The linebackers, none better. Hunt, Kelly, Carson, and Taylor. Mark Haynes, Terry Jackson, Bill Courier. And at free safety, Larry Flowers, number 37, starting in place of the injured Beasley Reese. First down, 49ers. That's Ricky Patton hit at the line of scrimmage, breaks one tackle and gets good yardage. Broke away from Harry Carson, hit down by Gary Jeter. Well, Pat, Ray Perkins got one of the things he said he wanted yesterday. He said he would like to start on defense, so because you can set the tempo with your defense easier than offense. Perkins looking on as his team has given up one first down already and a substantial gain by Ricky Patton as Earl Cooper now joins Patton in the backfield. Danny Davis out. Big to Cooper, Montana looking deep. That's pretty Solomon incomplete and no flags. Solomon says somebody bothered me. Courier is right back there in good shape with him. I'll tell you, it's a great job by Courier. It's a double zone. Courier is a deep man with the outside on the left. Now watch him get in there and just get that right hand up there. As much as anything else, I think he blocked out his vision with his hand. I think he did. He didn't really touch the ball. He just got it in front of Freddie Solomon's eyes. You're right. So it'll be third and five from the 49er 36. First possession for San Francisco. Giants haven't had it yet. A winner to play Dallas, Lawrence Taylor on a blitz. Wide open.
open is Ricky Patton down the sideline. Only one blocker, and Patton will go all the way. Penalty marker down. We'll have a clip up about midfield by Freddie Solomon. They'll call this one back. That's right. It was right on the 35-yard line. And Freddie Solomon made a clip there that allowed Ricky Patton to break loose. You saw Ricky Patton perhaps pointing out the man he wanted Solomon to block. Maybe he'd have been better off to leave him alone. Ricky Patton saying, all that work for nothing. We bring it back. It would have been a 64-yard touchdown. We'll hear right now from Ben Dreith, the referee, and I'll give you the rest of his crew in just a minute. Ben has a good voice. Personal foul, flipping number 88 on the offense. That's a first down. It is still indeed a first down. Solomon flipped Mark Haynes right there. There he is. He got him right from the back. That wasn't even close. That was a clip all the way, wasn't it? No doubt about it. Here's the blitz by Taylor. Watch Lawrence Taylor. I don't think there's anyone better at blitzing. And he's always getting blocked by linemen now. Early in the season, they blocked him with backs, but now they're doing it with linemen. Up close to midfield is Earl Cooper on that first down carry. He got about a yard before Byron Hunt was the first giant to hit him. Scott Bruner will start when the Giants do get the ball. Looks like he's waiting for the bell to ring to go to class. <laughs> Park bench. A lot of poise out there. He really has. And his record indicates that the team has a lot of confidence in him. His figures don't indicate that. As far as passing percentage, but everything else does. Here's the fake reverse, and Solomon goes down in the grasp of Byron Hurt. We ask about the help. I beg your pardon, it was Montana who faked to Solomon, and then down he went, a nine-yard loss. That's the thing with all those fakes. You know, they fake the reverse. If you get any, any penetration at all, then the quarterback doesn't have time to get the ball off. Too busy faking. Third and 19, back at the 41. Brad Van Pelt, I started to say a minute ago, may be healthy enough to play, and he might play some. But Byron Hunt still plays, and he's done awfully well. Jumping off sides is Freddie Solomon. Montana just retreats and puts it down the ground. That was one thing that is darn near inexcusable for a wide receiver to jump off sides. The umpire is Dave Hamilton. We told you about Ben Dreit. Ball start on number 88 on the offense. He made contact. Ray Doday, the headlinesman, the line judge Jack Fetty, back judge Banks Williams, side judge Ed Ward, field judge Jack Vaughn, all and the start. alternate. 88, offense. Is Jack Johnson. And all these playoff games, of course, they do have an alternate official. And they also have an officiating crew that's working together for the first time. This is an all-star crew. Third and 24, 49ers going in the wrong direction. Mike Wilson is in the game as the 49ers go with three wide receivers. Montana receives. Fires, passes, incomplete, bounces off the shoulder of Ricky Patton. And the 49ers with their barefoot kicker, Jim Miller, will have to give it up. They had a barefoot place kicker last week in Philadelphia. Miller is a barefoot punter. He got started that way because he lived on a on a farm and he didn't have any any kicking shoes, so he kicked every every kind of ball he could find barefooted, didn't he? Didn't have anybody to play with. Just him and the ball and no shoes. Off the side of that barefoot, Bill Courier lets it bounce and it takes a 49er bounce. Penalty marker down again. That was one of those penalties, Pat, that kept flying from, from way back in the backfield. And that's usually something on the tight end. It's usually the defense holding on the tight end initially. A 38-yard punt by Miller. 38 seems to be the number for this weekend, doesn't it? It's against the Giants. That's right. When that flag comes from the deep in the secondary, it comes flying at 20 yards. It usually is defensive holding. Who's on 
the tight end, and that'll give the 49ers an automatic Defense first down. Holding the yardage before is not he so kicked the football at the first down. But that first down is very important. 49ers still keep the football at their own 41. 41-38 San Diego over Miami, 38 nothing. Dallas over Tampa Bay and a 38-yard punt, the first one by Miller. Montana, the quarterback. What a great year he had. It's Patton. Looks to Mike Wilson and got him on a quick slam in giant territory. You know, early in this game, Pat, we can see what the 49ers are trying to do offensively. They're running play fakes, holding the linebackers, see, and then working the receivers behind the linebackers and in front of the secondary, as we just saw Mike Wilson there. Montana is three out of five. There's the book on Wilson. Clark got wide to the left. Wilson's out of the game now. They can take the pattern. It's Clark. Clark gets away from Terry Jackson. Almost book clear. Jackson finally hung on. It's another 49er first down. Bill Walsh was telling us last night that he expects this man, Dwight Clark, to have a big day. He said because he can handle this type of field. He says he has good balance, and he doesn't slip when he cuts, and you can see it there. That rain that appeared uh, just briefly as the game got underway seems to have stopped now. It was a very fine mist. And this field, although it's in pretty good shape right now, can't stand too much moisture. Ricky Patton. Look wide to the left, Earl Cooper is the lone setback. Montana will throw again, the Giants quit. Montana, that's Clark. Clark inside the 15 to about the 11, Larry Flowers made the stop. That's the favorite pass pattern of the 49ers. They have one back outside of Clark, one back inside of Clark, and he hooks right between them. He does indeed have that great feel as to where to pull up against zone coverage. He's a lot better than they thought he would be in the beginning. Oh, it was, uh, you know, how he was drafted. Uh, Bill Walsh went to work out Steve Fuller, the quarterback, and Clark was catching for him. Johnny Davis and Ricky Patton will carry. Patton down to about the nine, hit down by Byron Hunt. <laughs> The one thing about the 49ers offensively, they never give you the same look. They always have something. They have one back in the backfield, two, motion, fake reverses. Just about everything you can imagine comes out of this group here in the red jersey. Five and a half minutes are gone in the first quarter, and the Giants still haven't had the football. And two big plays, of course. One is the touchdown, and it's called back to Clint. The other one was a penalty on the punt where the Giants would have had the ball. Second and eight from the nine. Montana, remember he scored the first time around. He throws this one out of the end zone. Clark, the nearest receiver, but a penalty marker is down. I saw that one. That's that umpire right behind the defense. When he throws that, that's holding on the offense. Yeah, you're right, John. Ben Dreith will take it back in the other direction. Joe Montana, a quiet leader. Brian Kelly, the giant defensive leader, being insulted by Ben Dreith. Holding offense number 56. I think we can see that, Pat. It's right here in the middle. We'll see Fred Quill in the center, 56, working against Bill Neal. You see his right arm. He had the right arm outside his shoulder. The left arm, he pulled him down with. That was a double pull down. You said yesterday, Jenna, he was going to have trouble with Neal. Montana rolled right. Solomon out of bounds. Montana's hot. Mark Haynes pushed him out of bounds. Freddie Solomon. Can also throw the option pass if need be on some of those reverses they're faking. And he can also get deep. And, you know, this year when I talked to Freddie, he was so proud of his blocking. And then the first block that he throws, he gets a clip. But he said, if I've improved anything, he said, I've become a complete receiver. He said, because now I block. He said, watch me. 
third and seven from the eight. Montana has hit four in a row. Linville Elliott will now operate on the right-hand flank. Davis is the lone step back. Montana fires in the end zone. Touchdown. Charlie Young, the tight end. that ball and then he could find Charlie Young in the back of the end zone. Ray Orshing hits the extra point and the 49ers move in front with 9.03 left in the first quarter. Watch. Yeah, here Charlie Young is going to the back of the end zone. He's running the pattern. He just stands there. He's waiting. Montana's working around. He finds him in the back of the end zone. 7 nothing, 49ers. Pat Summerall with John Madden at Candlestick Park in San Francisco. That's the story of the 49ers drive, 13 plays. That was despite 30 yards and penalties that the 49ers had on that drive. Phil Sims underneath that jacket talking with Ray Perkins. Here's Ray Washing. All set to kick off, and Leon Bright back deep for the Giants. Won't be Bright, not is Bright. Bright gets outside the 30 to about the 33. A penalty marker goes down. Amos Lawrence made the tackle on Leon Bright. A lot of penalty markers already. 30 yards in that drive. A crucial one against the Giants that enabled the 49ers to keep possession of the football and this one is against the Giants. Ben Perkins looked like he was standing there in disbelief, didn't he? Who did? I know he didn't want this type of start. You know, he felt that if they could start on defense, set the tempo, get the ball, maybe get a little field position, but he didn't want to start 7 nothing. Illegal block above the waist in the back, number 56 on a run back. That's a first down. 56, of course, is Lawrence Taylor. That has to be the most popular call of this year. An illegal block in the back. That's a big, that one will win the award. Number one call of 1981 season. Mullody, the tight end, is put wide to the right. The two wide receivers speeding. On the other side, here's Carpenter. Carpenter rambles over the right side, outside the 25 to about the 26. Stuckey made the stop. Here's the giant offense. Bruner, Carpenter, Perry, Ernest Gray, and Johnny Perkins. The two big backs. Mullody starting in place of Gary Shirk at tight end. Westonard, Black, Turner, and King. Gary Shirk had back spasms in the locker room before the game. Didn't take part in warm-ups, and we haven't seen him since. It's Johnny Perkins in motion. Second down again. Carpenter, Carpenter, Rand outside about a foot or so short of a first down it appears it's not short of a first down it is a first down san francisco also plays a three-man front there they are stucky reese and Dwayne board the linebackers harper reynolds Pookie, and tina turner and that dandy secondary the fabulous four lock right williamson and dwight hicks Three of them rookies. Renner again gets the carpenter. He's hit behind the line of scrimmage and knocked back by Jack Reynolds. The hacksaw over in the 49er bench. Trying to stay dry and trying to stay warm. The Niners all wrapped up. Carpenter got perhaps a foot. There's what he did all year. Only one back in this game, and as a matter of fact, who averaged over four yards of carry. That's Bill Ring. Young and Mullody now are in the giant lineup. Two tight ends, two wide receivers, and one setback on second and nine. Young in motion. 
Bruner will throw. Throws too young. He has it. Taken down by Carlton Williamson immediately. About a six-yard pickup. It'll be third down. Well, this is one of the, the situations that that the Giants would like to stay out of because there's one defensive lineman that hasn't been mentioned yet, and that's Fred Dean. He is number 74, and he just entered the fray. And look out for him. And he doesn't start, but he's in the Pro Bowl, and they call this Dean Fence. Look at that chest on him. He has a sternum injury, and that's a little added protector. They put a tight end across from Dean to neutralize him a little bit, and they keep him in. And double team. It'll be a first down as Bruner hits Carpenter. The Giants pick up their first first. Second first, I'm sorry. Bobby Leopold made the stop. Now, that was an interesting thing. As you said, they put a tight end on Fred Dean's side, and Ray Perkins said he wanted to do that. You know, Ray Perkins knows Fred Dean. He coached with him at San Diego when he was with the Chargers. He says, we're going to put a tight end on his side most of the time, but he didn't say he was going to double team him. We thought he was just going to put him there to make him think about it, but he yeah. kept him in with a double team that time. Mullody and Weston both watched him. Perkins in motion this time. First down, Giants. Carpenter to the outside. Ross got a couple. Got into 40 on our territory before Jim Stuckey again wraps him up. You know, last week against the Eagles, the Giants had 24 first down situations, and they ran the ball on 22 of them. This guy did 33 times for 161 yards. What a day. Bobby Leopold, number 52, comes in the game along with Fred Dean again. There had to be certainly two of the outstanding trades made this year by these two teams. One for the 49ers to get Dean and for the Giants to get Carpenter. Second down and eight. Throw it, gets it to Carpenter. Carpenter hit by Reynolds. Fumble. 49ers football. There's another big addition to that team who just made a big play there, Jack Reynolds. Bob Carpenter's upset. He didn't think that he fumbled that ball. He's telling Jack Fetty that wasn't a fumble. I was down. Fred Dean now, he's man to man there, and Jeff Weston, he gets by him, but Bruner does a nice job of stepping up, buys a little time, gets it to Carpenter, and that ball left as soon as Jack Reynolds hit him. Reynolds hit it with his helmet and knocked it loose. That was a fumble. 49ers still lead 7-0, their football. Here's that last fumble. We'll see it right here. Carpenter catches the ball. He has possession. Now, right there, Reynolds hits him. See the ball pop out before he's down? That was a legitimate fumble. And that was Bobby Leopold who made the recovery. Rob Carpenter over having some equipment check. Nothing physically wrong with him. First down, 49ers at their own 46. Two tight ends. Another offensive alignment. This is Earl Cooper. He might have gotten a foot. Haynes up with a good force. Penalty marker down again. A giant is also down. Is they're both down. It looked like the man that made the block is underneath the man that he blocked. That's Haynes who's down as far as the Giants are concerned. You see the clip indication against San Francisco. And Solomon is the other. I don't think he's hurt. I just think he doesn't want to move while Haynes is there. They don't know what's wrong with him. That's usually what they do. When a doctor runs on the field and they have that type of situation, he'll tell them, both of you stay there. Let's see what Freddie Solomon does. He's the outside receiver in the right. Comes off the ball. He comes up. Haynes gets by him. Haynes is up there in good support. See, now Solomon blocked him again from behind. That was a real clip. That's the second time that Freddie Solomon has clipped Mark Haynes. They're still working on that double stack over there, and they're trying to put some of the divots back. Whipping on Solomon. It is the call indeed. Haynes took all the power of Earl Cooper almost right directly in the face, in the face mask at least, and he's still down. 7-0 San Francisco. 
It's Mark Haynes who is back of Terry Jackson now sitting up. And he sat up uh, under his own power. Here's what happened to him. That's Freddie Solomon. Watch the whole thing again. It's going to be a run out here to Mark Haynes' side. He's number 36. He'll start up. He gets by Freddie Solomon. Now Solomon should let him go. But he stays with it and see what happened to him, Pat. He really got high low. He got hit low from behind by Solomon and high from the runner Cooper. The old schoolyard trick. And fortunately, Haynes seems to be okay now. He really took the shot both in the back and in the head. This was probably the shot in the head from Cooper more than the one from behind by Solomon. His place has been taken by Mike Dennis. Another guy who hit you. First down, 49ers, Montana to go right to work in that direction. Right, Clark. And Dennis makes the stop on Clark. So you didn't take Joe Montana long to figure out uh, who Mark Haynes's replacement was. Watch this. He puts Dwight Clark over there on the right side, has him running out. You see now Mike Dennis is playing too far off. There he comes into the picture after Clark had made the reception. Johnny Davis goes in and Earl Cooper comes out. Dennis is going to play that far off. They're going to have to make a defensive adjustment. Second and nine. Here's a handoff to Ricky Patton hit by Bill Neal as he gets just to midfield. There's John DeSiegel. That Haynes underneath the hood. Joe Montana. What a start he's had. He's hit eight out of ten passes. He already has 127 yards, and he's hit his last six in a row. Time remaining in the first quarter, 4.02. 49ers pretty much dominated this first quarter, at least. Ricky Patton and Earl Cooper behind Montana. Montana going deep. Intended for Cooper. Swinging out of the backfield. Back there with him was Brian Kelly and coming over Mike Dennis as well. That's the other pattern that the 49ers love against double coverage. When they double to the outside, the corners rotate, the safeties rotate outside. That leaves the middle open, and Joe Montana always tries to get deep on that coverage. He's just saying over there, I had him, I had her on Cooper. But Brian Kelly did a nice job of covering. Here's Jim Miller. Leon Bright back deep for the Giants. Also back deep, Brad Van Pelt on one side and Bill Courier on the other. Works off the side of the foot of Miller. Leon Bright comes up quickly. Gets outside the 25 to about the 27 where the Giants will take over. With 335 left to play. And the first quarter at Candlestick, Dan Buns is the man who made the stop on Leon Bright. have the ball first and 10 at their own 28. 49ers leading 7-0. Three and a half minutes left first quarter. Leon Perry and Rob Carpenter. The two runners. Perry gets his first carry of the day. And it turns out not to be too healthy. Wayne Ford. 49er takes him down. The one thing that 49er defense is really playing tough against the run on first down. Those are the rankings in the NFL. Philadelphia number one. 49ers second, the Giants third. The turnover ratio, you can see the playoff teams involved in that. The defense also helps consider Rick Dean. Cut down this time. A Bruner Tice set up a screen. Gray sets sail, being chased by Willie Harper, but they're not going to catch him. Ernest Gray with a touchdown from Bruner. I'll tell you what a throw that was. Dave Jennings here, he's a, he's a top cheerleader. Boy, did Scott Bruner thread the needle on that pass. I don't think he was the intended receiver by any means. They were trying to set up a screen. Watch him, he comes to the outside. We'll see it's his own defense. He just hits in there and keeps sliding. But that ball was thrown before between three 49er defenders. And when Ernest Gray gets a step on you, you're not going to catch him. 
72 yards. Scott Bruner to Ernest Gray. Danello will kick and Bruner will hold to try to tie it up. As the first quarter winds down, Danello does. It's 7-7. Boy, how things can turn around. 72-yard touchdown pass from Scott Bruner to Ernest Gray. Let's see if we can watch that one again, Pat, from the from the start here. You know, Scott Bruner doesn't have great statistics, but he sure comes up with big plays. Okay, now we're going to see right here, this is Ernest Gray here, and we're going to start. He's going to come down. He'll get behind. He'll get a bump here. He'll get behind. Just work into this area here against the zone defense. Get between it. Catch the ball here. Break and get all the way in for a touchdown. Very well done. <laughs> I love it. you see that bump in there you see he gets it then he slides in he slides between the two layers catches it right there miss tackle and it's all over and the score is seven seven that was Dwight Hicks who missed that tackle on Gray and Gray was off to the races Willie Harper was the 49er with the best chance at Gray but I think that's a bit of a mismatch. Danello will kick off that drive, if you can call it one. Two plays, 72 yards, and the game is all even. Danello to kick off. Bill Ring and Amos Lawrence back deep for the 49ers. It's Amos, Amos Lawrence. Penalty marker is down. Lawrence has got some room. Amos Lawrence hit by Danello. who made the saving tackle a 47-yard kickoff return by Amos Lawrence. From where the penalty flag is, it looks like it would be the Giants offside, and I'm sure the 49ers will turn that down. Kicking team was offside. You were right, and you're right again. They'll turn it down. You know, Amos Lawrence was also acquired from the San Diego Chargers. The Chargers have been very good to the 49ers. They got Fred Dean, they got Amos Lawrence. Decline the penalty. It's a first down. I'm sorry, Ben. Ben talks twice. I mean, he tells you twice what those plays are. But the third player is the starting left tackle, Dan Audit. And the 49ers have it in good shape. At the giant 48-yard line, Cooper and Patton, the two runners. For the two seconds. Solomon has the pass completion. Mark Haynes is back in the game. He was a little bit off. Solomon as well. That's one thing. I think the Giants are going to have to start getting up a little tighter or a bump on these outside receivers because we can see Solomon there. He runs unmolested the whole way, catches the out, and they're really giving big cushions to these outside receivers. Perhaps you saw at the end of that replay that number 10 is in the game now. That is Brad Van Pelt. And Haynes is back as well. the ball carrier. No place for Rick to go back there. He drops the football. Drops on it. And George Martin drops on top of him. And there's Brad Van Pelt. Ray Perkins was telling us last night that he was okay. He would start Byron Hunt and maybe play Brad Van Pelt. Is that something that Ricky Pat really shouldn't do. Once you start on a sweep to the right, you have to find something in there and get it upfield. You can't turn and reverse your field, especially on this type of field. Second That's what down. caused it right there. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that step. Big foot. And 17, they need Montana throws over the middle intended for his tight end, Charlie Young. He is tripped up by Larry Flowers. Montana was under heavy pressure from the giant defense. Nine out of 13, 138 yards, and a touchdown pass to Charlie Young. Score tied 7-7 in this NFC playoff game. Yeah, we just looked at Charlie Young there, and Joe Walsh was saying that he has really come along as a as a blocker this year. He said he may be the best blocking tight end in the NFL. Teams have given up on him at one time. Montana on third down. That's Mike Wilson, the third wide receiver in the pocket. Now throws deep. He's got a man wide open. Clark. That 
Clark is down and out of bounds at the six-yard line by Larry Flower. Or can he get open? I'll tell you, he can get open, and the other thing is Montana can move around, and he can buy time. Again, now we'll see this here. This is a double zone. You see, Mark Haynes comes up. He bumps Clark. Now he lets him go to the safety. See, now, now Mark was going to run it out. He saw Montana move. He went out and up, and he caught the ball out there before the safety, Larry Flowers, got over there. It'll be first and goal 49ers. Clark is big for a wide receiver, 6'4", 210. Here's Montana. And Bell on a blitz intended for Cooper incomplete. Bill Courier, the defender for the Giants. You know, in that last play, we saw the isolate, the play before the isolated White Clark. But again, it was this guy here, number 16, Montana. By scrambling, he could buy that time that allowed Clark to run us out and then react by going up. It'll be second and goal at the six. 46 seconds left, first quarter, two tight ends. Houston Ring. This is Bill Ring. Ring rings down to about the two before George Martin puts him down. Bill rings down to the two. <laughs> I'll tell you, they like this guy. He's a first-year man. He's only 5'10". He weighs 215 pounds. Played at Brigham Young. Was with the Pittsburgh Steelers at one time. And he roomed with Rocky Blyer, who's his idol and his agent. Well, a good relationship. <laughs> idol and agent. Third down and goal from about the three. This is Ring again. Van Pelt wraps him up at about the three. The rain starts to come down a little bit harder now. There's a guy who's ready to play, Brad Van Pelt. He hasn't played in a month. He was originally injured in this game. First playoff game for that nine-year veteran. Long time coming. Second quarter. Worshing makes it 49ers 10, Giants 7. Worshing kicker from Montana did a great job of getting that high snap and getting it down. Worshing looks a little disgusted at the moment. He always looks that way. We'll watch his snap here. Watch the job that Montana does. The ball is high. He has to not only bring it down, but bring it back into him, and Wershing makes a perfect kick. Okay, now let's watch this big play that Clark. Here's Clark out here. Now, the, the Giants are going to be in a double zone. Haynes will come up, react here, get a bump here. Courier is, I mean, Flowers is supposed to be the outside man here, but he is influenced by a back coming out of the backfield that keeps him in here. Clark gets by the bump, starts out, sees Montana scramble, and then runs up. Let's watch it. He gets by that first bump. You see the inside bat coming. That holds Flowers and leaves the outside man, Clark, wide open. And wide open indeed he was, and that set up the field goal by Wershing of 21 yards. Montana has 177 yards. That's Leon Bright who will bring it out of there. And bangs out to about the 22-yard line before he's hit down hard by the 40 yards. Amos, Amos Lawrence. Penalty marker down again. Leon Bright, who Ray Perkins said is probably the toughest man in the NFL. And indeed, we've seen him take some vicious hits this year. Giants are saying that that calls against the 49ers, Pat. Usually on those kick returns, it's usually the return team. It is against the 49ers, and they'll add some more yardage on to Bright's return from that'll, that spot. That'll be 15 more. Excuse me, but that's 15 more. That's the signal for unnecessary roughness. 
49ers have already been penalized 60 yards. The Giants 20. On a kicking team. On a return. That's a first down. Did he say number 14? That's the kicker, Ray Worsing. That's what, I, that's what I thought he said. Kickers aren't supposed to do that. You don't find many kickers get unnecessary roughness calls. I wonder if he kicked somebody. First and 10 at the 37. Bruner drops on first down. Throws outside Carpenter with some blockers in front. Harper to hit hard by Ronnie Lott, and he broke Lott's tackle. And got more yardage. Jim Stuckey finally got him down. Ronnie Lott, who has the reputation of perhaps the surest tackler on the 49er team. Well, that's one thing about this young secondary of the 49ers. They're all big guys and good tacklers. You know, that's what Bill Walsh was saying. The thing that he liked about them is that they're all physical. So they're natural hitters. It's the first time the Giants have thrown on first down today. They got five, and they get second and five. Johnny Perkins goes in motion, and Gray split wide to the left. They had Carpenter, and he left it on the ground, and Bruner got on top of it. The draft choices the 49ers made this last spring, I don't know if there's ever been a better one. Ronnie Lott, who of course starts, Eric Wright, Williamson, and Lynn Thomas. And that's what they've done. That sort of solidified their pass defense. Three wide receivers to the Giants. Third down, got six. Perkins in motion, Bruner from the shotgun. Bruner going deep for Perkins. Picked off by Ronnie Lott. Lott in Giant territory. Penalty markers down. Eric Wright. Put somebody back at about the 45-yard line. Put Dernis Gray, who was the intended receiver. So, you know, watching the 49ers over this year, they get more of those type interceptions where a receiver goes to catch the ball and he gets hit and the ball bounces up than any team that I've seen. Let's watch this. We see Perkins comes in motion. He gets bumped there by Lott. Lott runs underneath him. Now, you see right there, Hicks is up there, hits right at the time the ball gets there and Ronnie Lott comes up with it. The penalty against Eric Wright. Lott brought it back 25 yards before the penalty. The guy that really made it possible was Personal Dwight foul, Hicks. Clipping right. number 21 on the return. First down. Let's just watch the clip again. Here it is after. Now watch 21. Right there, clip Ernest Gray. No doubt about it. It'll be a first down 49ers at their own 32-yard line. They lead 10-7. I have not seen a, a hair headpiece quite like that before. Do you? That's an old coach who couldn't adjust to the new rules. <laughs> First and 10, 40 minutes. Montana fakes on first down and is going to throw. Going to Solomon deep. Back there with him with Haynes and knocks it away. Very nearly an interception. Haynes is saying that perhaps Solomon interfered with him instead. This is one of the times that the Giants use a man-to-man. -man. Now watch it. Haynes starts out here. He's on Freddie Solomon. Solomon starts to the outside. Haynes just runs. He looks. He locates the ball. Goes up with both hands. Now, what he's saying is Solomon got his hand in there and didn't let him catch the ball. He may have had somewhat of a point. Second and 10, 49ers. Their own 32. They lead 10 7. 13 04. The first half is Ricky Cooper for ball carriers. Cooper ran back side the 40. Very close to first down yardage before Larry. Something you know, the 49ers a year ago, yeah, these guys boo it or cheer it, but the 49ers a year ago expected big things of Earl Cooper, and he's really never matured as a runner that they expected. He's a big guy, a good pass receiver with good speed. He goes about 230. That's the first first down the 49ers have made all day rushing. They said they were going to throw it, and they have. They've thrown it successfully. 
Beasley Reese did not start, has not played. Flowers in his play. Two tight ends, Eason Ranch, and on the right, Charlie Aaron on the left, and Montana's not happy with that offensive set, and he takes the timeout. We have 12 minutes, 12 seconds left in the first half of play, with the 49ers leading in this playoff game in seven. Candlestick Park in San Francisco. 49ers 10, the Giants 7. Pat Summerall with John Madden. 12 minutes, 12 seconds left, first half. Joe Montana, after taking that timeout, has his 49ers set in a two tight end formation. With Pat and Earl Cooper behind him. And the fake to Pat. Solomon going deep, and he's got his man burned. Touchdown, Freddie Solomon. He went right by Terry Jackson. Great fake by Montana, set that whole thing up. 58 yards and a touchdown, 49ers. These people have waited a long time for this one. Freddie Solomon said, I didn't start off well. I've had two 15-yard penalties, but I can get deep on Terry Jackson. going to keep that ball too, Pat. He's not going to let anyone have that football. That's a touchdown and a playoff. Boy, that was a good fake and a good throw by Montana. Ray Wershing will try for the extra point. And hits it. And the 49ers now lead by 10. 17-7. They can hurt you. And they can hurt you fast when they have that speed like that Freddie Solomon going down that left sideline. Now let's look the fake here first. See, he fakes the Patton, holds the linebackers. He held Harry Carson in there, and then it was just man-to-man -man with Freddie Solomon on Terry Jackson. Let's watch Freddie here. Again, it's man-to-man. -man. We'll see him. He just sprints. He doesn't make any moves at all. He just runs right by Terry Jackson. about prophecy we'll get back to that in a minute here it is right here they start and there'll be a play fake in here montana fakes comes on back throws from here solomon no move at all just right by jackson starts back settles a little in here and solomon gets beyond them the play fake no move just a sprint Roger Staubach say before the game that he had talked with Terry Jackson. And Terry had said he couldn't wait to get in the contest next week against Dallas Bruce Pearson. We saw Terry last night and I said, you have any message for Freddie Solomon? And he said, no, no, no words for Freddie. He'll run right by me. And he did. Leon Bright from the two. to the outside, still on his feet, out of bounds at about the 37. Good return. Worshing knocked him out of bounds. Solomon's caught three passes for 80 yards. Clark has caught five for 104. No, but if we look back, the thing that made that all possible, of course, was Ronnie Lott's interception because that's how the 49ers got the ball near midfield. And after the penalty, the 49ers struck quickly. First down, Giants at their own 37. 49ers leading 17-7. Certainly a position that Ray Perkins did not want to be in as Joe Montana. Pops upstairs to the assistant coaches, Leon Bright and Leon Perry in the backfield. That's Leon Bright outside the 40, about the 42, a fumble. 49ers are saying they've got it, and they are indeed correct. About to blow it open, Tina Turner made the recovery. And I wonder why Rob Carpenter wasn't in there. You know, if you watch Leon Bright going off, he has rib injuries, and he has a flak jacket on. And sometimes that's hard to hold the ball as you're going in with a flak jacket. Carpenter is standing over on the sidelines, appears to be okay, but there must be some reason. 17-7, San Francisco. at the giant 42 they'll go for more quickly and the middle complete charlie young taken down by flowers first down 
Inside the 30 to about the 28. Or they strike in a hurry. Mike Wilson enters the contest along with Mike Schumann. I think this is a very important series right here for the Giant defense because if they allow another score here, that may be too much of an uphill battle for them. It may be as the rain continues a little bit. Four wide receivers in the game this time, a formation we heard about yesterday. Montana looks left, throws right. Solomon taken down immediately. I think there may have been more wide receivers than that because Freddie Solomon and Dwight Clark were in the backfield. Freddie Solomon came out of the backfield to catch that ball from the halfback location. They had Schumann, Wilson, Clark, Solomon, and Young all in the game at the same time. And you never know where they're coming from. That's what Bill says. He says we want to kind of hide them so they can't plan what we're going to do. Come at you with a lot of weapons. Ricky Patton and Earl Cooper now the setback. And off is to Patton. Patton to the outside. Steps out of the hands of Arcanes and scores. 49ers on the road. Touchdown run by Ricky Patton. I think if we watch this again, it was a it was like a tackle trap. We see the outside number 61 there. Dan Audick pulled and made a nice block that sprung Ricky Patton to the outside. Audick came all the way from his left tackle position. And Worshing has the extra point. It's San Francisco 24. The Giants seven, and we still have 10 minutes and 24 seconds left to play in the first half of this playoff game. 49ers rolling. That's Ricky Patton, who's wearing the glasses. Five rushes, 28 yards, 25 coming on that touchdown run he just made. He's also been with a couple of other teams and found a home in San Francisco. Bill Walsh has done an outstanding job of bringing all these people together, hasn't he? He really has. That's Mike Dennis this time instead of Leon Bright. Knocked down at about the 18-yard line by Rick Jervis. Well, let's see if we can watch that touchdown play again. That it was really interesting. Charlie Young right here, the tight end, gets a good block. But the big one is the left tackle right here, Dan Audick. Now, most of the time, guards pull, but we're going to see Audick pull all the way across and right here at the point of attack, block two people. He comes all the way, boom, he gets two right there, and that's what sprung Ricky Patton. We come back live and watch the Giants operate with Rock Carpenter, the runner. He bangs for about five before they push him backwards, led by Archie Reese, a nose tackle. You know, one big thing for the 49ers now, with a lead of 24 to 7, the running of Rob Carpenter isn't as important to him. But with as much time left as there is, and you're a giant, you really it's not time to panic yet. We know that after watching those games yesterday. Yeah, isn't that the truth? Second and five at the 24. Perkins goes in motion to the right. Leonard gives again to Carpenter. And Carpenter's got some running room. Carpenter will have a first down at the 38-yard line. Dwight Hicks led the 49er tacklers. Uh, Carpenter, good run. Found some daylight to the outside. And gives the Giants some breathing room. That's the other thing. When they put Fred Dean in, you know, they would like to run at him. You see, now Weston does a good job there. See the left tackle? He gets outside. He hooks Fred Dean. He gets outside position, keeps him to the inside so that Carpenter could bounce out. Giants operate now with two tight ends. Mullody is in motion right now. The big rookie from Purdue. And he indeed was really in motion. The throw. Side, Demolity. That's enough for a first down, but Young was in motion. Carlton Williamson made the stop on Mullody. Of 
course, the rule on motion is that they can go across the backfield in parallel, but they can't turn upfield before the ball snaps. These two teams met in the regular season with the 49ers winning 17-10. Now this is the victory that locked up the division title for them. Illegal motion offense number 89. And in that last game, you know, the Giants dropped eight passes and had five turnovers. And still it was only 17-10. Look at all the yardage. The 49ers have been penalized 75 yards. He's still at 841 left to play in the first half. Again, Young goes in motion. Winner gets to Carpenter. Carpenter gets to about the 35 under a horde of red-shirted 49ers, led by Craig Pukey. He's from Tennessee, as is Jack Reynolds. And Craig has sort of patterned himself after the mannerisms and lifestyle of Reynolds. Right. In fact, they were roommates in training camp. They both went to Tennessee, as you said, but 10 years apart. He looks yeah. a little like Jack it Reynolds, does. doesn't it? He doesn't have a hacksaw yet. At the 35, they lost yardage on the last play. All at second and 12. Great first down Giants midfield. Eric Wright made a stop. Another good throw from Bruner, 16 yards. I'll tell you that height to Bruner being six foot five, I think, is a real advantage for him. We'll see Ernest Gray come off here again. He's working on Eric Wright. He just runs a little in, gets up in the air, and makes the catch before Wright can get there. You know, Jeff, Jeff Weston's doing a good job on Fred Dean. Watch the pass protection here. He gets that right arm in there. Stays square, keeps battling, stays between Fred Dean and the quarterback. Here's Carpenter with good yards. Rob banging down to about the 44. Dwight Hicks again made the tackle. Talking about Jeff Weston. He's a guy who sort of just made himself into an offensive tackle. Made himself a different looking individual entirely with a work program. Right. He was originally a defensive lineman. In fact, he was drafted by the Miami Dolphins. He was a defensive lineman. Played some defensive lineman for the Giants. Then they moved him to offense, and he changed his entire body. And you can see by that mix-up with Dean a minute ago that he's got a considerable amount of upper body strength. Here is Bruner back to throw, and throws quickly. Young had it, dropped it. 49ers all around. Craig Cookie in the 54 was there, and so was Jack Reynolds. The two roommates, 54 and 64, right back there together. Now there's a real linebacker, Jack Reynolds. He's been in the playoffs nine years in a row. What an amazing guy. That may be an all-time record. Yeah. Look at those eyes. You don't think those are the eyes of a linebacker? Don't smile, Jack. Don't. Yeah, that's a good. Don't ruin it. Especially not on game day. He may not even smile when it's all over. Third and five at the 44. Out of the shotgun is Brenner. down under Weston. The pass is caught by Johnny Perkins. Another giant first down. Bruner threw that one a little bit behind, but really on the line. You know, since Bruner's been the starting quarterback, I have the feeling that the Giants are doing more things. You know, I mean, here they got the shotgun. They have a lot of motion, different things. But you see how that height helps? Stands back there. He can see over that line. Another thing that helps is that the offensive line is doing a superb job of pass blocking. First down, Giants at the 49 30. That's Gray in motion this time. Brunner takes the carpenter. Looks at Perkins. Is throwing for Young. Nina Turner had great position on the big tight end. Didn't even let the move up field. Look at Scott Bruner there, Pat. He's complaining that, that official that that uh, he was bumped, that Young was bumped when the ball was in the air. That's good. I like a feisty quarterback. Yeah, they got to get in. Show some emotion. A little argue. That's good. Nice face mask. Scott Bruner's father. If you don't know, offensive backfield coach for the Detroit Lions. So he's been around football for a long time. Second and ten. 30 Bruner drops again. Blitz is on. 
Spinner throws. Pass intended for Tom Mullaby. Bounced out of his hands. Very nearly intercepted by Carlton Williamson. 27. Watch it right there. There's Carlton Williamson there. Just as the ball gets there, Carlton Williamson is tackling Tom Mullaby. You know, I said earlier, I think since these new rule changes, the coverage has to change in this league. The way to do it now is you let them catch the ball, and just as they catch the ball, you hit them. I think this 49er defense does that as well as anyone. If you do anything before that, the yellow flag goes down. Three wide receivers. Watch Fred Dean, number 74, at the bottom of your picture. Winner throws high. Dean put the heat on. Johnny Perkins, the intended receiver. We'll see Danello now. Lynn Thomas, also the defender. The extra back for the 49er. Danello. Sometimes the treacherous feel like this. And it is a little slick. Can hurt not necessarily the right foot so much of a place kicker, but the left, off which he drives as he kicks. You know, if the Giants had a fake field goal, I wouldn't be surprised to see it right here. They have one. They tried it a couple of times during the year. In fact, we saw them score a touchdown against Green Bay on a fake field goal. That's no fake. That's good. Well, he pumped that one right too. There was no doubt about that one. Whap. 45 yards out for Danilo. The 49ers only had 10 men on the field. But that doesn't make any difference. We'll keep that. Joe Danilo tees it up and will kick off to the 49ers. Not too much of a wind. This place, of course, is very famous for being one of the more windy parts anywhere. But today, that's out of the fact that the field is wet. Conditions aren't bad. Danello drills it down to Amos Lawrence. He's had one good return already. Amos hurdles out to about the 25 and bounces to the 26. Mike Whittington made the tackle. Here's Danello a minute ago on that field goal. You know, in this type of turf, the most important foot is the left foot, the plant foot. And you see his left foot just slipped a little, but he was still able to get all his leg into it. And got the field goal from 45 yards out. Van Pelt back in the game on defense for the Giants. 5.23 left to play in the first half. The 49ers 24. The Giants 10. Montana, the quarterback. Here's that same play again. And Van Pelt spun out of the block and made the tackle. That was the touchdown play of a few minutes ago. And the difference that time that Van Pelt got across the line and upfield instead of staying on the line. On the touchdown, the side was on the line. Now you see Van Pelt, he got up across into the backfield and took that block on. Difference was that it was Ayers, the guard, who pulled on that play instead of Audic, the tackle from the other side. Van Pelt went well. Throws as Solomon chased by Brian Kelly, but it'll be a 49er first down at their own 45. I'll tell you, you know, Steve DeBerg a year ago was the starting quarterback for the 49ers, and the reason that they changed to Joe Montana is that, that he can move, and he did this time again. He bought a little time by his movement, and that allowed Freddie Solomon to find a hole in that zone just on the other side of Brian Kelly. The two wide receivers, Clark and Solomon, both have caught passes for 100 yards. Woo. Good day's work already. Hand off quickly to Earl Cooper. Cooper saw some running room, but is brought down by Haynes after he picked up maybe two. Well, the one thing I think that the giant defense, especially on second and third down, they have to stop ignoring the run fake. That's what the 49ers have burned them with earlier. That was a long pass to Solomon off a run fake. Not a bad half for Montana. Second down, eight at the 47. Motion was young. Montana has Solomon again. Just very near a 
first down in giant territory. Kelly and Van Pelt converge. Let's watch Lawrence Taylor blitz here. Now, now again, he's getting blocked by linemen. We'll see Ayers, the left guard, pulls out to block Taylor, gets him and stops him right there. And Patton came over to help. Ayers might have got a little of Taylor's face mask as well. I think so. You know, early in the season, running backs used to try and block Lawrence Taylor when he'd blitz. And now it's guards and guards and backs and tackles and he's getting blocked by everyone. Third and short. Two tight ends. And Cooper. Cooper breaks into the giant secondary. Earl Cooper inside the 30 to about the 26. Larry Bowers finally made the tackle on Big Earl Cooper. I'll tell you, John Ayers made a great block on that one. He pulls out from the left side. His left guard, you see him pull there right on top of the screen. Now watch the block that he gets there on Harry Carson, and that springs Cooper to the outside. Then he gets another block by Ricky Patton. There's a good block on that side on Lawrence Taylor also. I didn't see who got that, but they twisted him inside pretty well. Two-minute warning in the first half at Candlestick. 49ers leading 24 to 10 over the Giants. The preceding message was furnished by the National Football League. Pat Summerall with John Madden. You see the book on the Giants for this very successful year that they've had. Montana's career best, by the way, is 287 yards. He's done that three times. He already has 276 yards in this first half alone. He starts patting in motion. Janet's chasing, Montana throwing, and just throws it away. A lot of pressure coming from Montana's left. In the person of Taylor and Jeter. You know, we were talking before the game that the field really won't be that big a thing, and I, I believe that. You know, we watched this first half, and I don't. I think that this ground crew has done an outstanding job of getting this football field ready to play today. The league suggested that uh, George Toma from Kansas City is considered to be the very best be brought in to work on the field. He's been out here four times. And the city of San Francisco deserves a lot of credit for the condition of this field. The four wide receiver formation. Montana started that quarterback draw. And the Giants wouldn't buy it. Bill Neal was the first one in white there. Joe Montana dropped back and he stops and watch him here. The first thing he'll see in the right of the screen is Jeter coming from the outside. And boom, he had to pull it up. And that play didn't work. I think that's one that they'll probably throw away. Huh? You won't see that one again today. <laughs> Coach Walsh's list. That's an interesting thing. It is. You got to explain that in a minute. Minute and a half left in the first half. Patton Cooper. Montana again drops. And again, he's under pressure. Van Pelt gets away from whoever was blocking him. And it was Eason Ramson. It was good coverage downfield. Montana couldn't find anybody. And Van Pelt took him down. I think the big thing is the Giants get the 49ers in second and long and third and long. Then the play fake really doesn't make any sense. And they can just tee off on the pass rush. Worshing comes into the game. Van Pelt. Trots over to the side on fourth down. Back at the 32, fourth and 16. This will be a 49, make it a 50-yarder by Wershing. He can kick him that far. That might get there, and then again it might not. Wide to the left and not quite far enough. Don't forget, next Sunday, one of these two teams will play the Dallas Cowboys, who trampled Tampa Bay yesterday with a score of 38 to nothing. It'll either be the Giants in Dallas or Dallas at Candlestick. Where those Cowboys looked good yesterday, didn't they? Wow. They looked like a machine. 49ers resemble that machine today, don't they? <laughs> they look like a machine today. See what happened to Wershing's left foot. 
That's the most important foot. You see, he, he looked like he was sliding into second base. And yeah, good slide. Yeah, it was nice. He had his head up, foot out. But when that left foot slips, then you can't get everything into it. First down, Giants and 10 at their own 32. They have all three of their timeouts remaining. 49ers have two. Bruner starting right to work. Throws low and behind Mullody. The intended receiver, he hurried that one a little bit. Clock stopped with 44 seconds left to play in the first half. Carlton Williamson, the defender. I think he hurried that one a little because the right outside linebacker, Tina Turner, was awfully close to him. So it'll be second down 10 at the 32. 49ers leading the Giants 24-10 as we wind down the first half. Cincinnati beat Buffalo earlier today. Play Carpenter. Harper quickly. And nothing doing. Tina Turner also on the tackle. You know, sometimes on a draw play, the most important block is that tight end. You know, to turn that linebacker out. They had the inside block, but they didn't get the outside linebacker, Willie Harper. Coming up at the half, Roger Starbuck, of course, on the left of your picture. You know the guy in the middle is Brent Musburger and one of the real great ones, Mr. Bradshaw, Terry on the right side. Giants just letting this clock run down and run out. And Bruner will indeed just let it run out. And the 49ers will depart the playing field at Candlestick Park at the end of the first half, leading by the score of 24 to 10. And they have looked very sharp. Ray Perkins and his Giants headed for their locker room. And John Madden said at the beginning of our broadcast that he didn't think, for one, that the field would be that big a factor, and it really hasn't been. 24-10 San Francisco. Ray Orshing will kick it off in the second half for the 49ers. San Francisco leads 24-10. Leon Bright runs over, finally feels it, drops it. And now Bright will start a field. And is taken down at about the 10-yard line by Mike Wilson. Let's check the first half statistics. What a first half of passing Joe Montana had. Look at that. 263 yards. That almost equals his best ever for a game. But again, that big one. Look down there at the bottom. Three turnovers for the Giants, none for the 49ers. They'll start way back deep in their own territory, the Giants, I mean. They trail 24-10. First and 10 at the 11. Here is Rob Carpenter cutting to the outside and cutting in for about six outside the 50. Stopped by Dwight Hicks. Giants touchdown came on a 72-yard shot from Scott Bruner to Ernest Gray. The 49ers. A pass from Montana to tight end Charlie Young. A 55-yard bomb from Montana to Fred Solomon. And a 25-yard run by Ricky Patton. Two tight ends for the Giants. Melody on the right. Young on the left. That's Perkins in motion, however. And it's Carpenter with the ball. Rob is shy of the 20. About the 19. Dwayne Board. You look at one of the bright minds in football anywhere. Bill Walsh. I tell you, he's sure done a job every place he's been. You know, he was an assistant in Cincinnati, developed Ken Anderson there. He was an assistant at San Diego where he had Fouts. He was a head coach at Stanford and now the head coach of 49ers. He's done an outstanding job wherever he's been. Great admirer of the great Paul Brown. Paul Brown's had a lot of influence on Bill Walsh's coaching. Leon Perry and Rob Carpenter, the two running backs, two big backs. Carpenter takes her. Big step one side, comes up and is hit by Dan Buns. I don't think he got the first down. I'll tell you, Dan Buns took a big step right into that line and met Rob Carpenter square and head on. That's the way you draw him up for a linebacker. A giant player is still down. They'll probably measure, and here come the sticks in to see if he did get the first down. It looks a little bit short. A 
think that's J.T. Turner that's still down, Pat, the right guard of the Giants. And you're right, it is short. And we'll see for the first time today, Dave Jennings. J.T. Turner still down. Jennings, the giant punter, of course, one of the best. Didn't have to punt at all in the first half. You know, at halftime, when the teams ran off the field, uh, Jennings went out to check the field to see what the footing was like because, as you said, he wasn't on there for the entire first half. Blessedly, the rain that was misting down earlier in the day has stopped, but it's really started to get cold at Candlestick, and the wind has picked up a little bit. It was 49 degrees when we came out here this morning, but it feels colder than that. J.T. Turner played in the World Football League, came to the Giants, and has done a good job. Back deep for the 49ers, Freddie Solomon, number 88, and Dwight Hicks, number 22. Jennings standing at about his six. 49ers up by 14 points, 24-10. But a lot of time left. 13 minutes left, third quarter. And now, just as I say, it's stopped and it started to rain again. Not one of Jennings' best efforts, but it hits on the ground and goes out of bounds. On the far side of the field at the 49er 35. No penalty markers on this punt. Everything is stopped. A 46-yard kick by Jennings. The roll got about 10 extra. 24-10 still. There's the guy that's been outside a little too long. <laughs> Looks nice. <laughs> Here's Ricky Patton. Double tight end lineup for the 49ers over the right side. Harry Carson made the stop. Here's the 49er processions. That's in the first half. And you can see that they got a lot done with those possessions. It's the situation Bill Walsh was talking with us about yesterday, about why they had run the ball so much more this year than they did the last two years, simply because they were ahead and they were looking at that clock a lot, eating up as much as they could. There's Patton going in motion. Montana gets to Cooper. Cooper swings to the outside and Earl Cooper rambles into giant territory before he's tripped up by Mark Kane. Cooper, they say, is a good outside runner, and he's shown that today. You see, he starts out here. They have motion going across the field. He starts out to the right like he's going to run inside, and that holds the defense. That'll hold the defense. See, he starts here. He starts like he's going to run inside right there. Now he'll bounce out to the left, find a hole between the tackle and the tight end. First down, 49ers. Montana now will put it up in the air. He has time chased by Byron Hunt and picked off by the Giants at the 40. I believe it's Bill Courier. But let's wait and see. Giant interception caused by the heat. Montana let one go that he shouldn't have thrown. Courier comes up with the interception. That's the first turnover by San Francisco. And that could give uh, a little moral morale boost. Let's see, we'll see Montana start back here. Then he's going to be flushed out to this left side. You see, it's good coverage. He couldn't find anyone. There's Jeter. He has to throw. He throws going backwards, and Courier comes up with the ball. Now it's Byron Hunt that came flying across from the other side. Here comes Mullody in motion. Gunner would go right to work. So much for the running. Mullody. I beg your pardon, Johnny Perkins. Perkins still on his feet. Perkins will score. Touchdown, Giants. Right back in it. A strike from Bruner of 59 yards. I'll tell you, we see Scott Bruner there, and he may not have the greatest stat, Pat, but he can make big plays. He can make things happen. He can see, and he can really get a ball in there when there's not an awful lot of room. Now watch Johnny Perkins. He comes here. There's a zone. See the seam in there? Right between three defenders, Scott Bruner just zipped that ball in there, and Perkins came up with the play and the touchdown. And that was Dwight Hicks, the 49er, who he stiff-armed right at the end. Johnny Perkins, who had been hurt. Hurt his knee and his ankle on the same play. Didn't show any effects of it that time, and the Giants are right back in it. Joe Danello with Bruner holding. Makes it 
San Francisco 24, New York 17. And the complexion really turns around in a hurry. So much for the machine. Pat Summerall with John Madden at Candlestick Park. J.T. Turner has a pinched nerve in his neck, but he is expected to be back. Brunner strikes quickly. You know, we talk about those turnovers, how those things kill you. Look how the Giants just score. They got their first turnover, and boom, they hit that guy right there, Perkins, for a touchdown right after a turnover. Then hello to kick off. That one's going to be tough to him. Amos Lawrence lets it go out of bounds and Danello will have to kick again. Let's look at this touchdown. We see the motion starts out here. This is Perkins here. He's going to come up and run a post pattern in here between the zone of the 49ers. Watch this as the coverage comes out. It looks like, you know, I don't have him. You got him. See, there's no bump right there. He gets right between the coverage and Bruner really made a perfect throw. That's two perfect throws Bruner has made for the two long touchdowns. The first one to Gray and that one to Perkins. He really threaded it both times. He looks happy, doesn't he? Reason. Those wide receivers like those touchdowns, huh? One thing about the giant wide receivers, all of them are pretty good size. Big and tall and fairly strong. And I still think Ray Perkins wants another one. I'm you're sure we had talked before and he said that he would like to draft some speed a real breakaway player in the first round maybe a wide receiver or running back and basically Bill Walsh said the same thing That's right wide receiver running back and offensive tackle Danello from the 30 this time lines it and it stays on the ground they drop it finally Amos Lawrence finds the handle breaks out of the pack and almost broke away from everybody. Byron Hunt. Let's watch the touchdown again. We see Perkins. I think it was a zone defense. We see there Williamson coming by. Maybe wanted to bump him. Didn't bump him. Hicks coming by. Too late. Perkins gets a step on Hicks right there and runs right through his tackle. 49ers will take over after a 19-yard return by Amos Lawrence. First and 10 from the 36. At secondary, the defense of San Francisco meeting on the sideline. Montana on first down has a man open. It's Ricky Patton. Patton still on his feet, knocked backwards, and he is sandwiched. Hit by Terry Jackson. Jeter came out, and Patton really took a wallop in the back. It was a play pass, and we'll see Terry Jackson there. He made a nice hit on Patton, but he didn't wrap his arm. See what happens when you tackle and don't get your arms right. See, play fake, uh, a fake to the first back, hit Patton out here. Now watch Jackson come up. He'll make the hit there, but see, he didn't wrap his arms around him. Patton made a little spin, and he had to take it by three more tacklers. That was Brian Kelly that popped him in the back and kept him down. Brian, he's been around a while and been through some frustrating years in New York. Right now, it's 24-17 San Francisco. The injured Ricky Patton over on the sideline, he did get a first down before he got hurt. So it's first down, 49ers at their own 46. Ring is the 49er back. He whirls into giant territory, but a penalty marker goes down. It's probably holding against San Francisco. That's the area that it comes from that umpire right behind the defensive line usually has holding on the offense. That's right. Clock shows 10 20 left third quarter. We've got ourselves a football game at Candlestick 24 17 49ers over the Giants. 85 yards now the 49ers have been penalized. Watch Ben Dry there. Offense number 56. You notice how he talks. It's always like I caught it. He's holding <laughs> offense number 56, <laughs> and he points right at him. Yeah, like it's really serious. Poor <laughs> guy, Fred Quillen. He never gets his name announced until he gets caught home. It's first and 20, back at the 36 now. Montana, no play fake this time. Good protection. Montana looking for Solomon. And he cut it off a little soon. Montana went high over his head. Mark Haynes, the defender. Mark Haynes had a lot to do with cutting that off. He had really good position underneath 
of Fred Solomon and had Montana not thrown that ball high Mark Haynes would have been in position to intercept it sort of a gentle rain still falling one thing the 49ers have done and you've heard a lot I'm sure if you followed pro football this year about the great rookie linebacker the Giants Lawrence Taylor Ricky Patton up walking down he is recorded today so far officially as having made one tackle here he comes on a play. Montana steps up. There's his second tackle. Maybe that's what Lawrence Taylor needed, Pat, was you to say that he's only had one tackle because he comes in now and not only makes a tackle, but it's a big sack. Now watch him coming from the outside here. They'll pull the left guard out on him, John Ayers, you see? Now, he's strong enough, Taylor is, to take on that block of a guard up above, pull him off, and still get to the quarterback. You're not going to block him by keeping a back end on him. No way. Nobody's done it all year. You've got to have a big guy. It's third and 23 at the 33. Taylor drops off this time. Montana sets up a screen pass in that direction. And Taylor makes another tackle. A very nearly Linville Elliott was the receiver. Harry Carson came over to make sure that he finished the job that Taylor started. You know, years ago, that was a big thing that you'd do. After someone would make a sack, you would run a screen play right at him. And that's what they do. And we see him, we see Dan Audick, the left tackle, pulled out, got in front. Taylor took him on and still stopped the play. The barefooted Jim Miller will punt Leon Bright back deep for the Giants. his own 25. Still didn't catch it. Bright does catch it. Leon coming back to the ice outside. Bright gets away from one man is taken down by Keena Turner. That was a great effort by Keena Turner because had he not made that tackle, Bright had that sideline out here. Yeah, he would have gotten big yardage. Giants will take over trailing by seven. 9.22 left in the third quarter. Score is San Francisco 24, the Giants 17. Giants have the ball at their own 29. They line up again with two tight ends and one lone running back. And that running back is Carpenter. They converge on him quickly. Carlton Williamson and Willie Harper. Nothing doing for Carpenter. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing that the 49er defense is doing a good job of against Carpenter is staying on the line of scrimmage and not over pursuing and allowing any cutback lanes. Carpenter got two, so make it second and eight at the 31. Carpenter 13 carries, 52 yards. Once again, he is the lone setback. And Young comes in motion to the right. Still no Gary Shirt. Young. Can't hang on. He had enough for the first. Carlton Williamson was the nearest defender. Lawrence Taylor over on the sideline. Hey, that's about as good a throw in that situation as you can make. That's, a, that's the second one that Young has dropped from Scott Brewer. In comes Fred Dean and Lawrence Pillars to the 49ers defensive alignment. And they'll play a four-man line. Dean shifts over to the right side. Giants operate from the spread formation with Perkins in motion. High snap, but Bruno's high, too. And he throws. Ernest Gray has it. That'll be a first down. Gray still on his feet. Ernest Gray gets around the outside. Good block. Gray out of bounds at the 49 39. Johnny Perkins with that good block. Perkins did make a good block. He was out in the pass pattern himself. After that, he sees he sees Gray catch the ball, and he comes back and makes the, the big block that springs him. Now watch here. We see Carlton Williamson going out. He should have gotten a bump in there. He didn't. You see now Scott Bruner finds him. There's a, there's a missed tackle right there. Now watch Perkins make the block. It's going to come up right there. Boom. He picks him off and allows Ernest Gray to make another 10 or 12 yards. As Lynn Thomas, he blocked and noticed that Perkins got his head in front. First down, Giants at the 49-39, and Bruner will work again. Steps up pocket. Ball goes down on the ground. Giants motioning, we got it. But 
They'll unstack. 49ers saying, we got it. Well, it'll be interesting because whoever has it, you know, now if the arm is going forward, it's an incomplete pass. If the arm is not going forward, then, of course, it's a fumble. I want to see that again because I thought the arm did start forward. The officials still haven't said which direction it's going. They're saying Giants now. Oh, Scott Bruner down there in the wrestling match with Lawrence Pillar. Watch his arm. That's it. Now he starts forward. He pumps. It's really hard to tell, yeah. but it looked like his arm was going forward. The Giants recover it, but that may not have been a fumble. I think it was a forward pass. I do, too. Nina Turner was in the battle, and he's the one who hit Bruner. So it'll be second down at 11, no matter what we think. Here's Bruner this time with good protection. He has a receiver, Young, and that should be with that last lunge enough for a first down. Jack Reynolds was out there with him. I'll tell you, Young caught that one. We said he'd dropped two on Bruner already, but he gets this one. We have him isolated here. He comes in motion across the backfield, waits for the ball to be snapped, and now he gets upfield. Watch, turns and runs the hook and, and come back to it. Now come back. Keep it low. That's it. Good. That's good technique. Young is a pretty substantial target. He's 6'6", six, six, about when. 240. Maybe a little bit bigger than that. No. No. Now, Ben will go back and give us Look up at us and tell us how much they need. This is how they always do that. Twenty-four seventeen. Ray Perkins pacing the sideline. Seven minutes, thirty-five seconds left. Would you think Carpenter? I would think Carpenter on the right side. He got the first down. Just by perhaps a foot, but he got it nevertheless as Dan Buns was the first man to hit him. 49ers do a lot of shuffling around, substituting both on offense and defense. Now they have Turner and Harper back in. Their regular front three will face the Giant first and ten. scrimmage the 49er 29 first and 10 Giants 49ers leading 24 17 again it's Perkins in motion this time when it fakes the carpenter punch looking for gray and overthrown the ball hung a little bit Eric Wright back there with him now that was a, an authentic pump gun that was what he was trying to do you see he pumped at the time Gray made an inside fake. It was a post corner. Let's see if we can see it again. We'll, we'll see Gray. Now watch him. He comes in here. He starts inside. That's when he pumped. And then he went back to the outside. And he really had good coverage there by number 21, Eric Wright. So it'll be second and 10. That's a good time to go for it, though. First and 10. You're inside the 30. Go for it. Air it out. Get him in the end. Harpenter gets the rest. Leon Bright in motion quickly. And Bright. Oh, Bruner had it. He had it. And Bruner is upset. He thinks somebody collided with his receiver. He had a couple of steps. And Leon Bright is complaining as well. Bruner is 10 out of 19 on the day. You know, Ray Perkins told us last night that he has some plays that can get Leon Bright open. This is one of them. We see here they get him outside motion on a linebacker, man to man on Bobby Leopold, and Bruner just didn't make a good throw. Red Dean back in the game. This time he's lined up on the left end of the line of scrimmage, defensively, that is. And that's where he'll come from. Three wide receiver. John Missler, one of them. He caught a touchdown pass last week against Philadelphia. Bruner from the shotgun. He's going to have to hurry. He does. Missler comes down with a spectacular catch. 
first down Giants. Holy. Carlton Williamson, the defender, but what a catch by Mishler. That was a great catch. That, that was a one-handed catch. He caught that ball one-handed. You know, but they have good pass protection. Jeff Weston is doing a good job out there on Fred Dean. Again, the height, but watch that catch. He goes up with one hand, his right hand, and brings it down in. Whew. What a catch by that rookie, John Mistler. It looks like Bruno. He doesn't look alike. He does. First down, Giants at the 49 or 11. Carpenter back in the game. They go with the two tight ends again. And the kid is to Carpenter, and Rob is down to about the six, perhaps the five, before he's tripped up by Keena Turner. They can make a first down without scoring. They'll have to get inside the one to do it. You know, that's the thing that the Giants like to do. They like to go two tight ends and then spread the defense out, hand the ball to Rob Carpenter, the only back in the backfield, and just let him pick a hole. Ray Perkins said, I don't care if he has to carry it 40 times, he's got a week to it. Just over five minutes left, third quarter. Carpenter hit at the line of scrimmage, struggles down to about the four. It'll be third down. Archie Reese on the bottom of the pile. Bruner, you saw, hold up four fingers for Perkins. Yeah, Scott Bruner was given a signal to the sideline of four. I don't know if he wants some wide receivers in there so that he can do a shotgun. You know, we've seen him do that before. Uh, last week he did that in Philadelphia, but it doesn't look like whatever he wanted, he's not getting. I think Johnny was telling Perkins that that's where the ball is. That's right. He is on the four-yard line. At the four. Hacksaw Reynolds comes out. It's third down. Maybe three for a first, four for a cut. Winner's going to throw it. Right Incomplete. He threw it a little too hard. Eric Wright wrapped around Ernest Gray. I'll tell you, I think with third and four, Pat, he had to throw it. That's really a long yardage situation. They probably wouldn't have gotten in running. And we'll see what happens. We see Ernest Gray comes in motion. He's going to start upfield and then run inside of Johnny Perkins. And the ball was thrown pretty well, but it looked like Eric Wright may have gotten his right hand in there. Yeah, it's very hard shot, too. Gonna really cut it loose. Well, you don't want to leave it in the air down there very long. Brunner will hold. Danello will try from 21 yards out. And Danello puts the left up right, no good. The 49ers will get it back at the 20 as Danello hits the left up right. The 49ers dodged a bullet that time. Didn't they ever? I'll tell you, now watch this. Again, he's hit, kicking from the right hash mark. He has to bring it over a little. Again, he overcompensates and brings it over too far. And so San Francisco will take over at their own 20. Yeah. It's been a rough three weeks for the giant kicker, Joe Danello. He was just in a discussion over there a minute ago with his holder, Scott Bruner. 4-12 left in the third quarter. Here's Montana giving to Bill Ring. Ring stays on his feet, fights for yardage, gets to about the 24, perhaps the 25. Byron Hunt made the tackle. As we watch Bill Ring there, number 30, uh, Bill Walsh was telling us yesterday, I said, will you play Ring much? And he says, yeah, in the second half. What he likes to do is get the defense, wear him down a little, and then put in ring with his quickness. Right now he comes to the sideline along with Clark and Ricky Patton, who was hurt a little bit earlier. Two tight ends for the 49ers. Take the Patton. Montana looking for somebody. Throwing. Has a man. Easton Ramson, the backup tight end, will have a niner first down. Harry Carson made the stop. Easton Ramson was injured in the first preseason game this year of the 49ers. At that time, they thought that he was going to be their starting tight end. Good day for Montana. That'd be a good day if the game were to end right now, huh? 302 yards, two touchdowns. 
Why Tittle has the all-time 49er record with 371. Montana, good day. Practice some more. On a blitz is Lawrence Taylor, and Taylor takes down Montana after he got a couple. You know, we use that term great athlete or great athletic move, but that was one right there by Lawrence Taylor. We can watch it again. He'll come from the outside, the right side of the screen. John Ayers is, has him, has him blocked pretty well. Now, Montana starts to scramble. Now, watch him lay out there that great effort to come up and catch Montana from behind. Boom. What he a play. Two. He got two. And make it second and eight. It was a great play. There's the 38-yard line. Their own 40 minutes. And off Cooper. He is tripped up at the line of scrimmage by another outstanding rookie, Bill Neal. The nose tackle for the Giants. One thing about that three-man line, if you're going to run against it, you have to block the nose tackle. In all the games that we've seen this year, Pat, I don't think we've ever seen anyone knock Bill Neal backwards, have we? He has done well against every center just about he has faced. Montana with his career best. Now the Giants go with a four-man rush. Phil Taylor. The one. Montana throws out of bounds. That one was aimed for us, John. They didn't even see it. <laughs> he threw it right in the direction of the 49er bench as Gary Jeter put the heat on. And Miller will have to kick again. 132 left, third quarter. The winner of this contest will face the Dallas Cowboys. If it's San Francisco, it'll be here next week. If the Giants win, they'll go to Texas Stadium. And then on January the 24th, the Super Bowl. From Pontiac, Michigan, number 16. Miller hasn't had a good day for him. He's helped himself right here. Leon Bright goes all the way back to the 12-yard line. Penalty mark is down, and the Giants will start. Right got out to about the 16, but they'll start way back. Bobby Leopold on the tackle. 49 yards punt by Miller. As you said, he hadn't been having a he hadn't had a great day, but he sure got one off when they needed it because that's going that put the Giants way back. And then you add the 10-yard penalty, they're going to be coming out inside the 10-yard line. out after Ben Rock Ben Bright lets us know where we'll start things. We'll try to see if we can find where the penalty took place. I think it was on Terry Jackson. He was over there complaining about it. Terry will let you know how he feels. That's right. He sure will. He said he didn't want you to mention Terry Solomon. Block in the back above the waist. Number 36 on the receiving team at the first down. Watch this, it's gonna be a, we see him right here, see Haynes, Haynes blocks there from behind, and then Jackson blocked him legally. I think it was on Mark Haynes, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah. At any rate, the Giants will start first and 10 at their own nine. Scott Bruner, the quarterback, that's Perkins jogging in motion, the handoff to Carpenter. No place to go, the 49ers swarm on him at about the 10. Lawrence Pillar, the ex-New York Jet. The first man to hit him. Field position is so important. It's just a, a great punt, and then you add a 10 yard penalty to it, can really change things around after a missed field goal. Clock is running now with 50 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Score is San Francisco 24, a giant 17. Mullody, the tight end on the right side. Leon Perry in there with Rock Carpenter. Perkins in motion. Turner. Lawrence Pillars again on the bottom of the file. Leon Perry, the ball carrier, nothing. Maybe a yard. I'll tell you, Ronnie Light, Ronnie Lott was right up there on the line of scrimmage. The 49ers have really been ganging up on the run the last two plays. Giants not taking any chances down this deep in their own territory and trailing by just that one touchdown. However, expecting pass this play. Getting the gun ready. Giants probably will not have it. No, they will as the gun takes. 
takes care of the third quarter. That's the end of the third quarter. With the score, the San Francisco 49ers 24, the Giants 17. We'll be back with the start of the fourth quarter after this word from your local station. At Candlestick Park in San Francisco, Pat Summerall with John Madden. Dave Jennings, the giant punter, over on the sidelines. Scott Bruner, however, right now is back in shotgun formation. This time he gets the good snap. And the protection's not bad. Pass is complete. They get a little breathing room. Not enough for a first down as Perkins made the reception. Out to about the 15-yard line. Taken down by Ronnie Lott. And here comes Jennings on the field. He this needs a good punt. This will be a big punt for Jennings here. As we see Perkins working against Ronnie Lott, did a good job of getting open, but of course it wasn't enough for the first down, and the Giants need a big, big punt here. Freddie Solomon and Dwight Hicks back deep for the Niners. Good snap, 49ers do not try to rush, and Jennings really doesn't catch it. That's Solomon. He gets to the outside and finds some running room. Freddie Solomon still on his feet. Solomon whips down inside the 40 to about the 36-yard line before Byron Hunt made the stop. Watch this. It's a 42-yard punt, which is okay, but it's a 22-yard return, which, of course, for the Giants is not. Haynes was down there. Freddie made a nice job. Gets to the outside. Now... Look at the way the blockers now, instead of trying to block someone, they jump out of the way so they don't make that illegal block from behind above the waist. For those of you tuning in to see 60 Minutes, it will be seen in its entirety following today's football coverage, except on the West Coast, where you'll see it at its regular time. Montana goes right to work, or tries to, tries to set up something down the middle. Charlie Young, the intended receiver, and here comes the penalty flag. Uh-oh. The receiver that was right on it, the uh, official that was right on it said that it was okay, and the official behind him threw the flag. Ooh. Against the Giants, it'll be a first down. Solomon trots onto the field. Here's the play again. So we see him coming across here. We'll see it right He's there. He jumped in. in he had Number his left 29. hand. That's a first down. I think he had his right hand on his back. Courier did a good job with his left, but he hung on with his right. In the eyes of the official, at least, and it looked like a good call. First and ten, Bill Rings in the backfield, 33-yard line of the Giants. Montana fakes the ring. Outside to ring. And outside with him quickly is Brian Kelly for about a three-yard loss. All the talk about the Giants linebackers, probably Brian Kelly is the one that people talk about least, but he's the heady player in there. You know, he never gets fooled. He calls the defenses. He's always in the right place and a very sound player. Ray Perkins, in fact, said to us a couple weeks ago, if he judged athletes strictly by ability, Brian Kelly probably wouldn't be playing. But if he judged him by heart, that's why he is playing. Second down, give us to ring. And a penalty marker down again. Harry Carson made a stop on ring. Speaking of players with heart, they say the same thing about ring that they say about Brian Kelly. Let's watch Kelly there. We see John Ayers pull through and get him. Carson comes across, and there was a penalty against the 49ers. Ben Dreif has had a busy day. Trying to find where he wants to start. 49ers penalized eight times, 95 yards. The Giants six times, 41 Holding yards. Offense, number 86. Holding against Charlie Young, the tight end. Lock stops in with 13 minutes, 11 seconds left to play. San Francisco 24, New York 17. Ricky Patton, the information is, will not return for San Francisco. He has a sprained knee. That's Mike Wilson who 
sets up on the right side and it goes back to the left in motion. Montana goes to work. Montana has some time. He gets Wilson right there quickly. Van Pelt and a couple of other guys quickly. Brian Kelly, one of the others. Another penalty flag is down. Against the Giants this time, and they're really upset about that. I think that one may have been against Gary Jeter. Uh, it looked like something had happened, Pat, after the ball was thrown in the backfield. And they mark it off. This is a dandy. 15 yards, this one. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness on our defense, number 70. That's a first down. Against Gary Jeter, you're indeed right. It was against Gary Jeter, and it was after the ball was thrown. It looked like he kept his rush going, and, uh, of course, that's the thing that Ray Perkins is saying now. We can't have that type of thing. Linville Elliott into the game for the 49ers. They have a first down, 10 at the Giant 26, leading by seven. Reverse coming to Solomon. Solomon cuts up the middle of the field, and Solomon gets down to about the 14. Mark Haynes made the tackle. That's a reverse they had faked earlier today. This time they ran it. What a day Freddie Solomon has had. We said he, you know, he caught that big up there for a touchdown. We saw the punt return that made this drive possible, and now he comes up with a run on a reverse to get the 49ers a first down. 12-yard pickup on the reverse by Solomon. He almost dropped the ball on the exchange, but hung on. Ring and Johnny Davis now will be the two runners. 49ers barking at the door again. And off Ring, he's got some room. Gets away from Taylor. Ring still on his feet to about the 12. Terry Jackson finally cut him down. That was the thing that Bill Wall said yesterday. He said you may not see Ring much in the first half, but I guarantee you, you will in the second half. Now watch Lawrence Taylor gets him. He just stretches out. He runs through Lawrence Taylor's tackle. And he's able to pick up another four yards. Gave Taylor a little bit of a stiff arm and kept him away from his body. And Ring picked up seven. They make it second and three at the seven. Montana brings him up. Johnny Davis, and he barrels down to about the three. Brian Kelly on the bottom of the stack. But the acquisition from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers excels in short yardage. Big Johnny Davis. He's the running back that they bring in for the goal line situation. 6'1", 235 pounds. That's why they made that trade for Johnny Davis for goal line offense. He stays along with Ring behind Montana. They got a first down. Davis did it first and goal from the three. Solomon in motion. Ring scores for San Francisco. touchdown good block by cross he's headed for the pro bowl he's had a good year too that's it he got one johnny davis got the other bill rings for and Worshing makes the score san francisco 31 new york 17. we have 10 and a half minutes left to play in this contest to see who plays dallas going to lead. And Bill Ring will come across, follow Davis right into the end zone. Let's watch. It. Across pulls out. He'll take the outside man. Davis goes inside, follows Ring into the end zone. Ring follows him into the end zone. On that kickoff return, Leon Bright is still down. A problem, as you can see, with his left leg. Tougher 
soccer players around from Florida State played sometime in Canada his first year with the Giants 10 27 left to play 49ers up 31 17. Leon Bright still down injured on that kickoff return a minute ago He's hit by Ronnie Lott here it is lots 42. We'll see a lot comes in here. He's down there on the coverage. Now watch the hit right there, right across his body. And Leon Bright injured his knee. Leon still lying on his back. Still being attended to at the moment. Situation this. There is the man of whom we've spoken so often today. With all the electric equipment, Bill Walsh. His third year as the 49ers head coach and general manager. He's all wired up, isn't he? What a job. He started to say a minute ago, well, I'm, I guess we'll have to wait a minute again. Next Sunday, the Dallas Cowboys against one of these two. They quit right now, it would be at Candlestick Park. Young motion. Ball goes up in the air. Gordon King comes down with it. And a penalty marker comes down from both sides of the field. Flags come flying. There's this, is a, this is a real tough situation for the Giants now. They're in a position that they have to pass, and the 49ers can really put pressure when they're in that situation. Bill Walsh has a list of plays that he writes out. I think he said there was something like 25. Pass on. number 72 caught the ball. An eligible man. That's a loss of a down. A loss of a down because Gordon King came down with the ball. He has a list of plays you can see that he wants to run during the course of a game. They don't necessarily have to run them in the first time they get the ball. It depends on the situation. But one way or another he wants to get them get them used. You know what he says and, and I know what he was talking about that so many times during the week you have all these great ideas of things that you can do then you get in the game and the excitement of the game you forget to play. So he has them all written down there so that he won't forget what he wants to do. Second and ten Giants. Their own 30. Scott Cooner has been a quarterback all day. Carpenter comes out of the backfield. Gunner looks in his direction and throws. Pass almost picked off by Keena Turner. Was almost a great interception by Turner there. And if you had made that one, <laughs> you'd be a tight end next year. Again, John, a penalty marker is down. They've had a busy day. That looks like it's in the area of holding against the Giants. In fact, we're talking to the 49ers. I would imagine it probably is holding. I think you're against right again. I think you're right again. There goes Ben Drive again. Offense number 73 against Jeff Weston. Well, he's really done a good job. I mean, he's had, he's had on this one, he's playing against Lawrence Pillars, number 65, on the left of the screen. But he's done a good job of holding everyone out there. Now that was, oh, that wasn't holding. It looked like he tried to trip him, but he didn't hold him. All right. There goes Johnny Perkins in motion. Gunner from the shotgun. And a rush almost got there. It's intended for Ernest Gray. Almost came down with it. Eric Wright back there with him. Gray almost made a sensational catch. Hey, Bruner had a lot of pressure on this play, and he made a great throw to get that ball up there. He had to get it over Eric Wright, and he did. It was just just a little too far for Ernest Gray. It'll be third and 20 now for the Giants. Back up at their own 20 yard line here. Right, the defender. Here's Leon Bright. Son got hurt a minute ago on that kickoff return, but he's up and jogging at least. He's expected to be back. It's amazing. 49 is showing blitz. From Missler, throws behind him, incomplete. And we'll have to see Jennings again. Lynn Thomas was the defender. Ronnie Lott all 
So back there in the area, Jennings comes on again. Here comes Thomas out of the game. Listen to that crowd now, Pat. They're yelling for the defense, but the other thing is they're smelling victory right now with 9 minutes, 58 seconds, 31-17 to score. <laughs> they know it's right there. Solomon. Dwight Hicks back deep for San Francisco on number 13. Here's Dave Jennings. Doesn't quite catch this one either. Solomon lets it bounce. And it still bounces. Mike Dennis down there watching it. Number 46, Dennis downs it. No penalty markers this time. A 51-yard punch by Jennings. Helped out again by that favorable bounce. 31-17. That much time left. Pat Summerall with John Madden. Candlestick Park, San Francisco. 9.46 left to play. San Francisco has the ball. They lead 31-17. Earl Cooper and Bill Ring, the runner. Ring is hit by Harry Carson after he picked up about four. 49er fans and the giant bench. Not too many folks yelling for them here. Not really, but what a job they've done this year. Haven't they? Wound up with a record of nine and seven. The last three weeks, they have faced Dallas, Philadelphia, and now San Francisco. Second down. Cooper. Big Earl gets outside the 35 to about the 36. Brad Van Pelt tripped him up. Brian Kelly helped. Earlier today in Cincinnati, in the event you might have missed that, the Bengals beat Buffalo 28-21, and they'll play San Diego. This is a good opportunity to congratulate all the teams, the San Diego Chargers, Cincinnati Bengals, Dallas Cowboys, for being in the championship game. Not the truth. In a long haul. And this is what it's all about. Wilson stood out by the right. Here comes Ring around the corner. Penalty mark is down. Ring still on his feet. He could go all the way, but they'll bring it back. Ring finally down by Terry Jackson on the other side of the field, but a penalty marker down. And Mark. Ring knows it right now, doesn't he? But you got to do what he did. Keep but, chugging. That's right. It could be against the other guys, but it's not. Taylor was limping there. It looks like he he could have slipped and maybe injured a groin or an ankle on that play. He's way on the other side of the field. He was part of the chase and he wants to come out. And Byron Hunt comes in for him. Van Pelt will stay on the other side. Lawrence Taylor, what a great rookie year. You know, these rookies, they not only do a job on Personal defense. foul, illegal track back. On number 85 of the offense. Against Wilson, who was split wide to this side. Here's Taylor on the other sideline being attended to. His place has been taken by Byron Hunt. 8-10 left to play. Clock is stopped. Let's see what happened to Lawrence. See, I bet you he just twisted his ankle or something on a, on a cutback. You know, it may have happened even before that. Oh, no, it was right there at the end. It looks like his foot... Just got caught in the turf. That's right. Third down, 49ers down in Montana will put it up. He's chased by Van Pelt, gets away. Throws it in the direction of Clark. Didn't really care if it was completed or not. Another giant player is down back inside the 10-yard line. It's Brad Van Pelt. And I would imagine that that could be the same injury. You know, he injured that groin the last time playing on this field against the 49ers. He may have just re-injured that. Tore some scar tissue initially. Let's see if we can see it. When he makes that change of direction, it was either there or his shoulder when he fell to the ground. Remember, early in the year, he had a hyperextended elbow, and I think maybe that's what it is. 
Leon Bright is back. He's back deep for the Giants as Miller will stand and punt from his own six yard line. 8.03 left to play. 31 17 in favor of San Francisco. Giants coming on the rush this time. Miller booms it away from Bright. And something happened to him and Bright goes down. It looked like his knee might have popped out of place or something. I think it's his knee, Pat. That also could be a hamstring. And the way that he's grabbing right there in that right leg, that's the bottom of the hamstring, the insertion of the hamstring. And I bet that's what it was. Watch, he starts to run, and then there, there as he turns, that whole leg just tightened up on him. It's either a hamstring or a cramp. And Leon is down again. So 7.54 left. A 52-yard punt by Miller. 31-17, 49ers. And he felt that he was hit before the ball got there. Now, let's watch it. There's number 21. Eric Wright is on him. The ball's in the air. No, that looked like it was okay. Yeah, that was a, a great coverage by Eric Wright. That's about the only way you can do it without flags being thrown. <laughs> Working on Leon Bright again over on the Giants side. And Bruner has Carpenter as his own setback. Red Dean has intended for Mulvey. Dean had gotten inside of Jeff Weston. Tina Turner on the coverage. It'll be third and ten Giants. In the last two possessions, the, the Giants have went one, two, three, punt, one, two, three, punt. They send in Lewis Jackson, Lucius Jackson it is, and Leon Bright. Raining just a bit, some of the water dripping off. I think those were the same horses that we saw in Philadelphia last week. They just ship them around to the stadium. They're very good at crowd control. Bruner throwing deep. Nobody home. John Missler, perhaps the intended receiver, but high over his head. And again, Jennings will have to come on and kick. 7.39. Left to play in the game. And again, this crowd stands for the defense really starting to rain now Dave Jennings Brian Hicks Kurt Solomon back deep Jennings doesn't catch this one he'll have to let it bounce however Solomon runs away from it down by Mike Dennis 49ers will take over at their own 34, a 37-yard punt by Jennings. Next Sunday, don't forget the NFC Championship game. The Dallas Cowboys, who won yesterday against Tampa, against either San Francisco or the New York Giants. And then two weeks after that, the big climax from the Silverdome in Pontiac. Super Bowl 16. Who do you think is going to be there, John? We talk about these playoffs being what it's all about. That Super Bowl is really what it's all about. And you want me to make a pick? If you want to. How about Dallas and San Diego? Be a heck of a Super Bowl. That's Walt easily over the left side. Actually, when you get down here, any pairing would be a heck of a Super Bowl. That's right. And we start talking about Dallas, maybe not too soon because this 49er club has really been impressive today. Haven't they? They've got a lot of weapons. In Cincinnati, they know how to move the ball. Kenny Anderson having such a great year. They beat Buffalo earlier today. And that spectacular game yesterday, San Diego and Miami. Well, San Diego really hung in there. That was, that was some dog fight. Bad day for kicker fans. Oh, man. It's been a bad three weeks for kicker. Van Pelt on the ring. Third down, San Francisco. This is the Waltz theory here. Let us get ahead, and we'll run. Whether we get two yards, four yards, whatever, we'll get something off that clock. And that's why this year they've run 52% and passed 48%. Bill says because we're winning some games. He said at the end we can just run to run out the clock. 
He said last year and the year before we were always behind and we'd have to pass right up until the final gun. I think the most amazing stat about San Francisco was last year they gave up 415 points. This year they gave up 250 in the regular season. What a year can do and what a draft can do. Easy. And he'll have the first down outside the 45. And that's a big one. Harry Carson tripped him up. We can watch this play again. We'll see Harry Carson there is going to be the man that trips up easily, but it's too late after the first down. It's a little draw play, a delay. Carson plays off his block and comes in and makes the play. It's easily again to the outside, hit by Gary Jeter. Lawrence Taylor got kicked in the shins. And what his problem was, he is back in the game now. You know, Walt Easley, who has just run the ball the last two times, is a cousin of Kenny Easley, who was a number one draft choice in the safety of the Seattle Seahawks. The 49er offense finished 13th in the NFL. The Giants were third in defense. To the 49ers is that they put up 31 points. They threw the ball pretty well. Bill Reed by Harry Carson and Brad Van Pelt. So it'll be third down and long. They unstack at about the 46 yard line. I think you were right. They're still working over there on Leon Bright, and it looks like it was a cramp, and they're trying to loosen it up and, and, and stretch it. Giants called a timeout. So that'll mean they'll have two left. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League, is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the San Francisco 49ers and the National Football League is prohibited. Joe Montana. Can't do much better than he's done this year or this day. Yeah, you know, just a year ago at the beginning of the season, Steve DeBerg was the starting quarterback for this team. And of course, Bill Walsh had a lot of confidence in Joe Montana, and he traded Steve DeBerg this year. He has a lot of confidence in Montana's backup also. What's that Montana's wearing underneath his jersey? That's not his arm. It looked like he had some kind of cover. His arms hanging out of that jersey, huh? If they are, he's in trouble. Some kind of punisher. This is Clark on the reverse. And Clark gets very nearly the first down. About a yard shy, it appeared. But they keep that clock running. And the Giants are down to two timeouts. We saw number 51, Randy Cross, pull out and lead that play. You know, he may be one of the best pulling guards in this league. Of course, he's in the Pro Bowl. There's another timeout called by the Giants, and they now have only one win. Well, the Giants know they have to use their timeouts now and early because they need two scores. They have to think in terms of two scores. They can't wait and just have time for one score. So you might as well use them now. Clock is stopped with 421. Rain gets a little bit harder. Word on Leon Bright is that he has a Charlie horse. He may be back. Well, again, Ray Perkins knows that, that one more score won't do them any good, and they need two, so they need as much time to get it as they can. So he used up his timeouts. They'll get another timeout now, change of possession, and have four minutes to get two scores. They had a chance earlier when the score was 24-17. They were down in scoring range. They had it down at the four-yard line and couldn't get in and then missed the field goal. A cold, muddy foot, I'm sure. Harry Jackson is back to return the punt this time as Bright is injured. Jackson standing at the 10. And lets it bounce, lets it bounce, and it bounces out of bounds inside the 10. Big 
rush by Flowers. And Mike Dennis came very near to blocking that 37-yard punt off the foot of Miller. Well, the Giants did what they had to do. They had 10 men up in the line of scrimmage. They had to go for the block. But this man right there, Jim Miller, he did what he had to do to get the kick off. And he got it off quickly and safely. One shoe off and one shoe on. Watch this. He gets some pressure. It's a little bad snap. It was low. He gets some pressure from the right, but it was too late. That's Mike Dennis that got close to it. And the Giants have a long way to go. First and 10 from their own nine. Missler in the game along with Ernest Gray and Johnny Perkins. Bruner, a high snap. He brings it down one hand. Almost and it is a safety, I'm sure. No, they say it the one inch line. Not a safety. Willie Harper was the blitzing niner. This is the same rule on the safety as it is for a touchdown. Did he break the plane of the goal line or not when contact was made? They're celebrating like they scored, but they didn't score. What? Oh, high snap. Makes a nice catch going up in the air. Now watch this. Does he get out of the end zone or not? Oh. Couldn't see the goal line, but I don't think he did. That's the same rule as a touchdown. He's back up there. That should have been a safety. Here's Brenner out of his own end zone. He gets it out to Mike Freedy, I believe. No, this is Johnny Perkins. And Perkins gets out to the five. The giant players down in the end zone. Craig Pukey and Jack Reynolds made the stop on Perkins. Here comes the medical corps again. I think that's Jeff Weston, the left tackle, who's done such a fine job all day today. Place will be taken by Brad Benson. Checked into the game already. Benson's job at the beginning of the year, Weston came on and did such a good job he couldn't get it back. Mind you again about the situation with 60 minutes. Those of you tuning in to see it, 60 minutes, it will be seen in its entirety following today's football coverage, except on the West Coast. Where it will be seen at its regular time. You can see the rain pounding down now. There goes Weston. Brad Benson has taken his place. In time the 49ers now can just, just tee off. tee off and I'm sure that Tom Landry and his staff the Dallas Cowboys are watching this game and from now on they'll start turning their attention to the San Francisco 49ers. And you'll recall in the regular season that the 49ers just annihilated the Cowboys by a score of 45 to 14. And that game was right here on this field. Here's Gooner again from the end zone. The pass is picked up by Ronnie Lott. Ronnie Locke to the right side. He'll score. Touchdown, Locke. Fred Dean, the key block that sprung Ronnie Locke into the end zone. And Ronnie Locke, he said he didn't want to keep that ball. He said the fans can have that one, and he threw it into the stand. Boy, this place is going wild. A spectacular rookie year for that. First round draft choice from USC. Ronnie Lott. John Robinson, the coach at USC, told me that he may be one of the best players that he ever coached. Worshing with Montana holding. Good. It's 38-17 San Francisco. gets a jump on this one and we'll see it out here we'll see John Missler the wide receiver he's starting and he comes to the inside lot had him inside out he was waiting right there for the ball watch this little burst here he looks like one of those great running backs like the Walter Payton or Tony Dorsett Ronnie Lott Let's see we'll watch it again here 
Missy Missler's going to be here. He's going to come in here. We'll see Lott is right in this position. He'll drop back and wait for the ball right there. Let's watch it. See Lott's playing the inside man. Stays in his zone. Just drops back. He's right between the quarterback and Missler. And the 49ers go with their five defensive backs. Lott plays what they call the lurk position. And he was lurking in the right place. He works. Yeah, you just back up a little. Keep your toes pointed straight ahead, shoulders square, knees bent, and lurk. And if you lurk in the right place, you come up with an interception. And the giant linebacker is Mike Whittington. One of the linemen, I should say, is the man who will return. Or was it Joe McLaughlin? In any case, the Giants have it a little bit better shape this time. Wonder how long that line is outside Candlestick Park buying tickets or trying to buy tickets for next week's game. Well, we know when they started. We were here yesterday with them at 3 o'clock, and they started lining up yesterday at 3 o'clock to buy tickets for next week's Dallas game. Equipped with sleeping bags. Here's Bruner quickly throwing. Diving attempt by Missler incomplete. Gary Jeter. And that's going to be a penalty, Pat. I think it's against the 49ers. I think uh, Lawrence Pillar hit Scott Bruner after he threw the ball. That's correct. That's Gary Jeter you just saw over on the giant bench. There's the mark off. Takes him into 49er territory. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number 65 on a defense. That's a first down. San Francisco's been penalized 10 times for 125 yards today. You know, these fans have forgotten about this game, Pat. They're starting to chant, we want Dallas. Look at them. Imagine they'll show up. That's Perkins pass complete from Gruner to the 40 of San Francisco. Ronnie Lott, the defender. Some of the fans starting to depart. It has turned in now being uh, just a miserable day with the rain falling and it's getting colder and colder. Clock running two minutes and a half left to play. The Giants have had a one timeout. Bruner throws and throws it away. Intended for Lucius Jackson. Or Lewis Jackson, I'm sorry. He's from Cal Poly, right. San Luis Obispo. Lewis Jackson. Look at this. Scott Bruner has really done an outstanding job for this team. And Ray Perkins is going to have a tough decision next year as to who that starting quarterback will be. Perkins goes out wide to the right with Mister, And again, Bruner will operate from the shotgun. Jackson, one of the backs. The other is Carpenter. Pass intended for Carpenter. Right through his hands. The ball getting hard to handle now. Willie Harper, the defender. Over on that giant bench. Unhappiness and a lot of dejected faces today. Not so on San Francisco's side, but it's been a good year for Ray Perkins and the Giants, no matter what happens. And it has happened, I'm afraid. It has happened, but as you said, it's been a good year. They've made some great strides. Of course, being in the playoffs is one, but they've beaten the Eagles. They beat them twice. They've beaten the Dallas Cowboys in their division. And they're moving in the right direction. Brenner fires incomplete. Now, finally, it is complete to Perkins, and he gets up and out of bounds. I don't know how he caught it, and I don't know how Brenner got rid of it. I don't know how he threw that one. <laughs> If you're going to go down, you may as well go down swinging, huh? Might as well. Leopold was the rusher who almost got to Brunner. Pillars comes out. Brunner is 15 out of 34. 272 yards. That's the punter. Jim Miller. Waving to on. Brunner. 27 yard line. And again, he throws. Will. Intended for 
Jackson incomplete. Carlton Williamson right back there with him. Stride for stride. Many of the 49er faithful still in the stands. Bill Walsh, speaking of 49er faithful, his career records getting better and better and going to get better. Uh, he has the headset off now, Pat. His work has been done for what he had to do, and he's just talking about running out the clock there with Joe Montana, or maybe he's talking about next week in the Cowboys. Quickly and offside to Fred Dean. He left a little too quick that time. Johnny Perkins again, the intended receiver. Dean jump. Interception, no good. That's Ronnie Lott down on the ground. As we see Bill Walsh there, and you know that this year he used his first five draft choices for defense, and he said, Offside we got by this year, but we need some more offense, and that's what we'll draft next year, and maybe we're only one draft away from being a great team. There again are those draft choices that John Madden was just talking about. Lot Hardy, who's a backup nose tackle. Right. Williamson and the rest. Bruner has some time this time and fires. Mullody had it and dropped it. Juggled it and lost it. Ronnie Lott was with him again. Two-minute warning. Warriors in good shape, leading now 38 to 17, two minutes to go. And the last second. 60 minutes, don't forget. Stay tuned for it. It'll be on in its entirety right after football, except here on the West Coast, where you'll see it at its regular time. ever had a better year it hasn't happened since I've been around uh, he has been a superstar this won't be his last game this year because he'll be in Hawaii and playing the hula ball let's go Montana Pro Bowl Pro Bowl <laughs> maybe they're hula while they're there Perkins touchdown Brunner lays it in there a minute 50 left to play Lynn Thomas was the defender good throw from Brunner and Johnny Perkins has his second of the day We'll see this again. Johnny Perkins starts in motion from the right side over to the left, starts inside. He's running a, a corner move right out here. He gets a step, and then a great throw by Scott Bruner right over his outside shoulder. Super throw. Did I say hula ball? Yeah. <laughs> well, Hawaii hula. Yeah, I, I understand. Danilo will try this extra point. And hits it right up the middle. That makes it 38. San Francisco. The Giants 24. There again is rejected Lawrence Taylor. Johnny Perkins has had a good day. Seven catches, 121 yards, two touchdowns. See if we can watch that play again and see exactly what happened on the touchdown. Here it is here. Perkins is going to come across the field in motion. And then he's right now, he's behind the quarterback. He'll keep out here going in motion, come up. He'll be man to man on Lynn Thomas, make a little move to the inside and go to the outside to the corner of the end zone. Bruno will come back and throw it, lead him over Thomas and right over his inside shoulder. Motion, inside, now back out. Look at that perfect throw. And we come back for perhaps the on onside kickoff by Danilo. As I've said before, one of the advantages soccer style kickers have is they can onside it to the either foot. This one goes to the right, picked up by guess who? Ronnie Lott. This broadcast 
today. The senior producer, Charles Milton III, who was on the scene, produced by Terry O'Neill, directed by Sandy Grossman, and the associate producer, Joan Vitrano. Associate directors, Michael Burks and Bob Dunphy, and all the rest of the people. I can't imagine what a crew it takes to put on a game like this. I can't imagine one ever being any better than the ones we have. And off to Easley. He gets out to about, well, about the 50 yard line. Giants have one more timeout left, and they'll probably take it right now. Indeed. No timeouts left. 49ers comfortably leading 38 24. Next Sunday, don't forget, the NFL today begins it at 4.30 Eastern Time, and then it's the NFC Championship game between the Dallas Cowboys and the San Francisco 49ers. And that magic number 38 pops up again. And then a real, real big one. We'll be there getting ready for that for a long time. January 24th on CBS, the Super Bowl today, and then Super Bowl 16. You've got some fun memories about that event, don't you? I'll tell you, it's the greatest thing. It's the epitome of what we all participate in the game for. And again, another reminder that 60 Minutes follows football, except here on the West Coast where you see that it's regular time. Here you'll see it in its entirety. And the giant defense stops him, led by Joe McLaughlin and Frank Perry. Here the 49ers will just wait, take their full 30 seconds now, and they'll run third. They'll probably go on fourth down also. Lawrence Taylor getting a well-deserved rest over on the sideline. Taking everything pretty much in stride. Not trying to drink the champagne yet. Third down, Niners. At midfield. Here is Bill Ring. Ring tries to break a tackle by Marion. Doesn't succeed. 49ers still have the ball and they'll punt it. Hey, there's some happy people in the booth next to us, Pat. The owners of the San Francisco 49ers. Eddie D. Bartolo and his father, Ed Senior. They're very happy and they should be very proud. You know, the job that, that they've done and one in hiring Bill Walsh and giving him everything that he needed to build this team. There it is right there. Eddie D. Hats off to the, the 49er entire coaching staff and to John McVay as well. Director of Pro Personnel. There's a flag. They couldn't run it out. They still have to run one more play. Oh, here come some fans. They want to jump in on it. Offensive unit now goes back out on the field as the clock is run down to three seconds before they can claim the right to face Dallas next week. is over. Well, not really. Uh... Well, that's right. Uh, yeah. Still one second showing. 49ers 38, Giants 34, uh, 24, Delay sorry. Delay the game. Delay the game. One second on the clock. This is over. We'll be swinging it down to Brent Busberger, and he'll have some post-game guests. There's three seconds on the clock, and the line judge will time it. <laughs> the line judge is timing. <laughs> <laughs> three seconds on the clock. Long three for Ray Perkins. He's 
He's someone, you know, you know, he's one of the fine coaches in this league, too, right. Trey Perkins. Just say so long for John Madden and for Pat Summerall. We'll be going down to Brent Musburger in just a second or two. In fact, let's do it right now. Oh, thanks, Pat, so much. Good job, you and John Madden. Even enjoyed the heck out of the old chalkboard. And our buddy Roger went down to Dallas. He's got to get the Cowboys ready. They're going to have to be ready. They've, they're coming into a wild town and a great team. Great. What about the NFC Championship now? Uh, Dallas and San Francisco, who will be favored? Nobody. How can anybody be favored over this team? Dallas can't be favored. Neither can San Francisco. How about the AFC game? Cincinnati and San Diego. Well, you know that old golf expression. The Bengals are up by four. <laughs> and the NFL today <laughs> continues on CBS in just a moment. So congratulations again to Coach Bill Walsh and the San Francisco 49ers. Gee, Terry, I'll bet the Steelers hated to lose running back Bill Ring. Well, he was a guy we knew had a lot of talent. We just didn't have a place for him. Obviously, he's found a home here and did a great job today. Jimmy, before the game, you really called it. The Niners and you like Freddie Solomon. Well, how about Miami getting rid of Freddie Solomon? <laughs> That's right. They pick up a couple of players who add an enormous amount to their attack, not to mention, of course, Somebody like Hacksaw Reynolds on defense. Right now, let's go to that 49er locker room and Earth Cross, sir. Brett, okay, the man who wound up with the game ball, Freddie Solomon. Freddie, this has to be your finest hour. Well, yes, sir. Uh, I've worked hard all week, and I made some big plays, and I'm really happy about it. What's your reaction to the Giants' defensive effort? I mean, they just didn't bend at all. Well, they have a very tough defense, and we knew it. And our game plan was to go out and execute and out hit them, and I think we did that. Freddie, all week long, people were talking about the poor field conditions. Did the field hold up during the course of the game? Was it was it was a bad footing out there? I thought the ground keepers did a fantastic job. The field was great, the footing was great, and we just went out and uh, played football. You caught a touchdown pass. We're going to see it in a second. Take a look at the monitor here, Freddie. We'll take a look at your touchdown pass. Here it is, right here. Tell me about the play. It was uh, a go pattern. Uh, we faked in the line to kind of freeze the defensive backs and I just ran by number 24. Joe laid it up perfect and I caught it and took off. Nobody talks much about your speed. How fast are you? Well, I'm adequate. <laughs> adequate. Okay, Brett. <laughs> All right, Irv. He is adequate indeed. And Brad, what about now that great Cowboy defensive line matched up against the Niners next well, week? Well, I think it's a great matchup. I think the strengths are both offensive line and the defensive line of the Cowboys. You match up is good. Let's go back now to Irv in that victorious locker room. Irv? Brett, got Coach Walsh here who's just smiling from ear to ear. I saw you early in the season. I said, how good is your 49er team? He said, well, we're still not here, there yet. How good is, is this 49er oh, team? We're not there yet. We've got two more <laughs> games. But I do think we're going to be in there. And it's really, I think, a real tribute to this team to be among the top four. And as I look at those other three teams, they are super teams. And just to be included in that group, we're, we're extremely excited. And I think we can be competitive next week. Coach, was there any time during the course of the game you felt, well, you had it in your hip pocket? Well, it looked like we did as soon as we started scoring. Uh, I didn't. Those two big plays they came up with sort of uh, caught us, you know. But as far as our offense was concerned, I knew we were moving the ball. And once I saw we could move the ball against them, I felt very confident because if you can move the ball against the Giants, generally you're going to win. Our offense is a little better than theirs. But uh, I do give them full credit. It was a very exciting game and a typical playoff game. And here's part of the reason we're doing so well. All right, Coach. Congratulations. Here's part of the reason over 300 yards passing had to be your best day, eh, Joe? Uh, <clears throat> I'd like to think so. Um, I had a lot of protect protection today, as I have all year, and you know, when you've got that much protection, you can find guys open. All right, Joe. Found them open indeed. Brent? All right, Irv, thank you so much. Great matchup next Sunday. Bill Walsh against Tom Landry, two of the finest coaches in the league, and they'll be matching wits. Now, this is Brent Musburger saying so long from Candlestick Park, where that final score was, again, the San Francisco 49ers 38, the New York Giants 24. Be sure to be with us next Saturday for CBS Sports coverage of the 57th Annual East-West Shrine All-Star Game. Now stay tuned for 60 Minutes, next National Football League. This is CBS.